zone. When he finishes out over the front leg, you see good, hard sink and movement on the fastball. Whenever he finishes what I call on a hip side type finish, the ball flattens out and sails. It doesn't have the good sink. He's worked on that in his bullpen in between. Confident that he can fix it only because he's a veteran. A big pitching matchup. Jonathan Sanchez has been very good. Aaron Cook needs to be very good. When the players acknowledge it's a large series, you know it's a large series. Rockies and Giants, come on back with us. Hello, 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 test. Ball on FSN is brought to you by E470 and Express Toll, the best way to save time and money. By Quest, get two free gigs of online backup with Quest High Speed Internet. And by Nissan and your Nissan dealer. Perfect night for baseball, and the joint will be jumping. A crowd of more than 45,000 expected tonight. You know, Todd Helton is geeked up. He spent a good portion of his career waiting for moments like this. And he got a great taste of it in 2007, and he wants more. Here's Brad Hopp, two veteran leaders of the Rockies, Garrett Atkins in the foreground, will be in the lineup. And we need to tell you, off the top of the show, the Rockies are going to be without Troy Tulowitzki this evening. Tulowitzki, after the flight home last night, he arrived about... 205 in the morning, so it was a very late night. Players probably not getting to bed till well after three. Tulowitzki woke up this morning and was uh, sick to his stomach, literally. And he is not available tonight. So Clint Barmas will play shortstop. Ian Stewart will play second base. Atkins will be at third. You hate to start a huge series and not have your cleanup hitter and the guy who captains the middle of the diamond. Bruce Bochy's in his 15th season as a skipper. He has more wins against the Rockies than any other manager. There are numerous seasons down in San Diego. The last three have been in Northern California. Here's Bochy's lineup. A Eugenio Velez has actually played very well for Bochy. He's hitting the baseball well, and he's at the top of the lineup. Edgar Renteria battled the sore elbow in the two-hole. Pablo Sandoval, everybody loves this kid. He's hitting 330. Then Benji Molina, Nate Sheerholtz has been swinging the bat well. Travis Ishikawa, Aaron Rowan, eight for his last 16. Juan Uribe, the former Rocky in the eight hole. And then a light hitting pitcher in Jonathan Sanchez to face Aaron Cook. Let's check the Fidelity scouting report tonight. Uh, veteran right-hander Aaron Cook. Well, you know he's going to rely on the heavy sinker, 88 to 93 miles an hour. Go along with that slider at 88. 
81 to 85. Now the changeup, he very uses, very rarely will he use it, but if you see a low velocity like 85, 86, and see the same movement as the sinker, typically that'll be his changeup. Interesting to note, four and one here in Coors Field with a 456 earned run average, six and four out on the road. And Drew, I wasn't in Florida, but that last start, two and a third, eight hits, seven run, not anything like Aaron Cook. Doug Marino just handed me a note, his previous 11 starts, seven and zero with a 297 earned run average. Take a look at the gloves tonight for the Rockies in the outfield. They'll have Ryan Spielborgs, Dexter Fowler, and Brad Hopp. And then the infield had to be reconfigured because of Tulowitzki's illness. Barmas and Stewart up the middle, Atkins and Helton on the corner. Chris Iannetta, maybe a bit of a surprise behind the plate because in talking to Jim Tracy yesterday, it seemed like he wanted to give Iannetta a couple of days off offensively. Tori Alba threw out a hit, caught Jason Hamill yesterday, and did a very nice job, but Ionetta is back there tonight in the first game of this series. Now, Bob Apodaca has been working with Aaron Cook because Cook, George, felt like he was back on his heel when he got to his balance point, not over the ball of his foot. Can you explain well, that? Well, what you want to talk about is toes down. In other words, you raise up your ball of your foot or your big toe. It obviously tilts you backwards on the heel. So now you always talk about having toe down pressure on the rubber when you make that move to the plate and push off the ball of that foot. Now, obviously... He had a little bit of a toe injury that may have affected it where he's trying to relieve the pressure off the toe and got into a very bad habit. He says the toe is much better. Here's the 1 0, and that's in there for a strike on Velez. The biggest key for me with Aaron Cook is his extension to the plate, getting out over the front side on the left side of the knee, creates the big sink, along with that good hard down slider versus everything staying out flat. Way inside. And it's two balls and a strike. You, know, you look at the numbers for Aaron Cook, and overall 10 and 5, you got to love that. He hasn't had what you would call a dominant start since beating the Angels in Anaheim back in June. And the 2 1 is chopped to second, and a nice pickup by Stewart. That was not as easy a play as it looked, because the ball came up, George, on the hard dirt. Well, I think the one thing that probably helps Stewart out a little bit, realizing that you have speed and a guy that's a slap and run guy. And Velez, so, I mean, what you have to do then is try to cover up and get to the ball a little bit quicker. Stewart, nice job of making the play for Aaron Cook. The keys to this ball game tonight, for me, for the Rockies, take time with Sanchez. Make him throw the ball over the plate. Don't chase the fastball out. Cook to rebound on his last start. And, of course, the bullpen could be an issue with Houston Street going three straight days in a row in Washington. And that pitch is just inside on Edgar Renteria. The Giants lost in extra innings yesterday in Cincinnati at day ball game. They got walked off in the 10th inning. Drew Stubbs, his first major league home run, just called to the big leagues the previous day. And the Giants lost 2-1. to one. You heard during the pregame show, the Giants don't score many runs. You know that going in. I mean, the Giants are where they are because of Lincecum and Kane. Together, they're 24 and 7. Sanchez has thrown out a number of tremendous ball games, particularly in the second half. They hope Randy Johnson comes back in September. That's inside. There's Matt Kane on the right. He pitched yesterday, so you will not see him in this series. What a pitching matchup on Sunday. Lincecum, and there he is against Ubaldo Jimenez. Uh, two of the best young right arms in the game of baseball today. And that pitch is up, and it's swatted to left field, a base hit for Renteria. Uh, just what Drew was talking about, the Giants and the way they go about their games. Uh, seven games on this road trip, an earned run average of 256. A bullpen earned run average of 142. Starters ERA was uh, on the year, I should say, 256. Their ball club hit 273, but only four home runs. And remember, they were in Cincinnati. That's not a lot of runs scored, and now only 27 total so far scored out on this road trip. You know, Connie Langford, the hitting instructor, I know it's drove him crazy, but a lot of times when you get guys hurt, and they're missing Sanchez right now, Garko's had some troubles. Uh, to get these young hitters ad adapted to the big leagues, it's not easy. And here's the kid everybody loves to talk about, Pablo Sandoval. But in talking to several members of the Giants, even though, George, the numbers are outstanding, 330, 18 home runs, 70 RBIs, they say he is starting to show signs of fatigue after 120 ball games. First season, 
full season in the big league. Well, well you watch you watch a lot of young players even at the minor league level where they get out and play their first full season of 144 games and you look even at the backside of, a, of an August seer season you'll see that average start to dip and that's the same thing here tack on another 20 something ball games to a young player like Sandoval. And the 2 0 misses. It's 3 0. Jim Joyce is behind home plate. Bill Miller at first, Daryl Cousins at second, Angel Campos. Well, I think it's a real good ball strike umpire is at third. It's a 3 0 and ball four. So Aaron Cook has walked on four pitches Sandoval, and he's creating a problem here in the first inning. Benji Molino step in. And one of those guys too. With one out, you got to be careful, even with runners on first and second. Renteria, even a veteran guy, but decent speed with five stolen bases. Watch out for the hit and run. Remember the ball game when the Giants were here early. Runner on first and uh, second, and they put a hit and run on. The run scores. They change places at first and third. And he's a very good hit and run guy. Well, that strikeout. So he's going to put the ball in play. Look for Ian Stewart to set at his position at second base with Farmers cover it short. Swung on and missed on a 90 mile an hour fastball, but still, George, I know it's a swing and miss, but the ball's up in the zone. Elevated in the strike zone, belt high, high enough with a little bit of movement that he was able to get it behind by Molina at that time. But you're not going to be able to do it the whole ball game. No, nope. it's not Aaron Cook. He's a ground ball contact guy. Giants with just two runs in their last 18 innings of baseball. And that pitches up one and one. Cook felt like in his last bullpen session, and he threw two in between starts. Normally, he only throws one. He felt like he was able to correct that that mechanical flaw with the, with the heel and, and the mm -hmm. ball of the foot that you were discussing. But I think it's just like anybody else that you do at home. You play golf, you bowl, whatever you do athletically at home, softball, whatever it is, baseball. But once you get into a bad habit, you don't recognize what you're doing and, and you think everything's fine. But just the lifting of the toes up creates your to a balance where it throws your shoulders back. You're not allowed to get on top, have a downward plane, which is what Aaron needs to have. In order to keep the ball down in the strike zone, you would think it had everything to do with that toe injury. The body's going to compensate, even if you don't realize it. This ball is popped up in foul ground. Helped giving it a look. Ionetta giving it a look, but it's about four rows behind the dugout. So far in this 11 game road trip for the Giants that began in New York and took them through Cincinnati. They're four and three. They're 17 and 16 since the All-Star break. And Bruce Bochy knows night in and night out they're going to play a nail biter. And it's not often they throw up a big number on the board. And that's where he really honestly I think has his most fun mix, mix and matching in the seventh, eighth and ninth inning against opposing managers and winning the bullpen wars. This is hit the center field and well Dexter Fowler going back and it's over his head. It's a ground rule double the Giants will get one out of it and maybe a little bit of a break because Sandoval would have scored. So a ground rule double off the bat of Benji Molina and the Giants are up one nothing. They have two in scoring position for one of their hottest hitters Nate Shearholtz. Let's look at where this pitch is from Aaron Cook. It's appeared to be a slider down and away. Not that bad of a pitch, but it appears that, that Molina is able to sit on the pitch like he recognized it out of the hand. Now, whether he did or not, he appeared to do that because he took the ball into right center. You get a guy that far out on his front foot a lot of times, he'll hook the ball on the ground or pull it into the air. He went to right center with it. Well, Drew mentioned just an RBI machine and a guy that's a very, very good hitter. Shearholtz hitting 350 on the road trip. And this is a broken bat fly ball to hop. That'll get a run home. And it's going to be two to nothing. Now, not to start the Rockies or Aaron Cook. 
was looking for. Two outs, two in. Travis Ishikawa coming up. The Giants, like the Rockies, very tough when they're out in front. They're 52 and 15 when scoring first. That's the second best mark in baseball. The Rockies have the best mark at 50 and 13. And then the Yankees and the Cardinals. And the Rangers next. And, and one thing about all five of those clubs, they're all winning ball clubs. They're all winning ball clubs. And of course, the Cardinals and Yankees with substantial leads within their division. Here's Ishikawa. Yeah, we've often said with Aaron Cook, you can usually tell if he's got the good sinker in the first inning. And the first guy up, Velez, hit one of those chopped ground balls, and you thought, man, that's a great sign. But then he left the pitch up to Renteria. Line drive to left. Sandoval, a line drive that one hopped the wall in center field. Excuse me, Sandoval walked, then Molina, the ground rule double. And even the broken bat fly ball by Shearholtz. Because the pitch was up, George, he's able to hit it in the Able air. to elevate it and advance the runner. He just did a professional job of hitting to get the run in. This is a flare down the left field line. It's going to land. Right next to the stand, so it's 0-2 still on Ishikawa. Rockies fans, go to fsninsider.com. Check out the Douglas County Water. Pick them. Pick a team to win. See how long your streak can go. Oh and 2 on Travis Ishikawa. One and two. Ishikawa has been pretty solid offensively at home. In fact, he's hitting 349 at AT&T Park. That's better than solid. But he's been just miserable out on the road. A 167 road average. 19 for 114. Got a tremendous glove at first base. A long way to go in this ball game. You're at the top of the first inning. But one thing the Giants have done, at least initially, they've taken the crowd out of it. They have taken the crowd out of it, and there is a few Giants fans here. But more importantly for me, Aaron Cook's on 22 pitches. When he's working right, he's into the 12 to 15 range. Yeah, I mean strike after strike, and now it's two and two on Ishikawa. Dodgers and Cubs playing later on tonight in Los Angeles. One of the other big series in the National League, Florida and Atlanta. And in the seventh inning, Florida leading Atlanta three to nothing. That ball game at Turner Field. These two teams tied four games back in the wild card. And that's a base hit. That's going to get Molina home. Fowler's not going to be able to get to it in time to have a play. It is three to nothing. And now you're giving Jonathan Sanchez, who's been pitching very, very well, a large lead. And sometimes it, it, the Giants have more runs tonight than they had the last 48 hours. Yeah, they only had two in what, 18 innings or whatever they ended up with in that start over, or the games over in Cincinnati. Once again, though, pitch up into the strike zone. Look at this belt high on the inner half of the plate. Ishikawa does a nice job getting his hands inside the baseball, not trying to pull it, doesn't get the bat broken. It just takes it right back up the middle and allows Molina to come around to score. And a lot of times when you struggle as a pitcher with location or you, you're struggling with a mechanical issue, bullpens are okay. And Drew mentioned Cook through two in between the start. But it's actual game to where you get the feel. The problem you have is the, the situation you're in. It's not April and May. It's August, and you got a two-game lead, and you're playing the Giants. It's inside on Aaron Rowan, and the pitch count just continues to climb. 
Well, he really so can. unlike Aaron Cook, not only to have a high pitch count, but look at the ratio. 14 strikes, 12 balls. I mean, he's a guy that pounds the strike zone with a heavy sinker. Well, he never shows any emotion on the mound. That last pitch, he just kind of not put his head down, put his chin down. The release point is not anywhere near where it needs to be for Aaron Cook. No, he's not right. There's, you know, he just, he's not right. I mean, there's no other way to explain it. This is not the Aaron Cook people are accustomed to seeing. And to be honest, he hasn't been right, whether because of the toe. We're now recovering from the toe injury in a while. This is a broken back ground ball to Barnes. So the Rockies will finally get to the dugout, but the Giants, a team that is offensively challenged, gets three runs in the first against Cook. Battle back with their bats, and here's the lineup tonight for Jim Tracy, minus an ill Troy Tulowitzki. Dexter Fowler will lead it off, then Ryan Spielborg, who got four ABs yesterday. Todd Helton next. Garrett Atkins will bat cleanup. He's seven for 19 career against Sanchez. Brad Hoff after that, then Barmas in the six hole, Ionetta Stewart, and Aaron Cook. The only subpar outing for Jonathan Sanchez since his no-hitter of the San Diego Padres on July the 10th came against the Rockies in this ballpark. Rockies got him for five runs on five hits, and the big blow was supplied by Troy Kulowitzki, who hit a three-run home run against him. Yeah, he was, that, that's not an option tonight. No, and he was cooking along in that ball game until Kulowitzki's three-run home run. Five hits, but the big thing that jumped out, the four walks by Sanchez. Get this though, out on the road, one and eight with a 570 earned run average. More importantly, in his last three starts versus the Colorado Rockies, 0 and 3 with an 880 earned run average. Here's the one two, and it's on the ground foul. Sanchez averages almost nine and a half strikeouts per nine innings. He, to me, George, is a lot like Jorge De La Rosa, and he has turned a corner since that gem he threw at the Padres. 11 punch outs, no walks in addition, obviously, to no hits. He has confidence now. Confidence to throw three pitches for strikes, and he's turned into a pitcher versus a thrower. I really respect Mike Kruko, who does the analyzing for the San Francisco Giants, a very good major league pitcher in his own right. And that's the first thing out of his mouth about Sanchez. He's learning how to pitch. He's not just going out with great stuff and expecting hitters to miss. That slider's tough. Dexter, I don't know how he stayed off that. One and two, now two and two. Well, disciplined by Dexter because earlier in the year he would have swung at that. He's been able to recognize pitches coming out of the hand a little bit better. Been able to, to handle the pitch out of the zone and not swing. Frank Sanchez and Molina thought it was so good they came back to it. Now it's three and two.
You know, one thing that you hope turns around here at home, George, is the Rockies had a very successful road trip. They went four and two. Yet offensively, they hit right at about 200, 201 to be exact on the road trip. And you think 201 over six games and you want four of them? And you know what? You, re you would probably recognize and appreciate that against one starter on the entire road trip, and that was Josh Johnson that carried a no-hitter into the seventh. You know, everybody else there, you expect more offense out of that. And a leadoff walk as we look at the fidelity scouting report on Mr. Sanchez. You'll see that fastball, 92-97. It'll work away from uh, the right-handed hitter an awful lot. Tries to take it away from the left-handers. Doesn't throw in much. Hard-biting slider, 82-87. And a much-improved changeup, 78-84. Well, Fowler gave you, George, exactly what you were hoping for in your keys to the game, a long at bat, and he made Sanchez throw strikes, and ultimately he got the walk. Well, that's what you've got to do with Sanchez. Make him throw a lot of pitches. He is a strong kid. I mean, he can work into the 100-type pitch count, but still make him pound the strike zone with it. Work the count to your favor. Work it to hitters' counts, hit and run counts. He knows history is not on his side when facing the Rockies. Got an ERA lifetime over seven against Colorado. Well, if there's one major asset I've noticed with this ball club, talking about the Rockies, there's not a panic button in their, in their system. They're down three runs. They're more apt to take the attitude of their manager, Jim Tracy, and take the relaxed mode, and when the opportunity presents, then take the, take the pounding to the opposition. That's a strike, one and two on Spillboards. Helton's on deck. Rockies have one more left-handed bat in their lineup than they probably would have with Tulowitzki ill. Big chopper. This could be a problem. Barehanded play and a great one by Arriba. He had one play, and that was to grab it with the bare hand and throw in the same motion, and he got spillboards. The key to this whole play is the ability to read, charge, and get your body in a position to be able to do this on the one hop and recognize a lot of times when it hits on that second hop in the grass, it won't be as a high hop. So you got to be prepared. Is the ball going to go left or right? Arriba obviously did a very nice job recognizing all of that. So Helton will step in. A lifetime 332 hitter against the Giants. RBI out there in Fowler. And this ball is rope foul. Todd just 4 of 18 lifetime against Sanchez. Sanchez's splits right and left are almost identical. Righty's hitting 225, lefty's 226. Yeah, the biggest thing that earned run average 363 at home, 520 out on the road. Of course, the 360 earned run average, you have to figure those nine innings of no hit baseball. And the 0-1's in there, it's 0-2. If the Rockies score seven or more runs during any game, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the following day between four and six. Get four tacos for a buck. Dexter Fowler has really taken advantage at times of stealing third base with one out, and there's no two count on Helton out on a left-handed bat up. He has done that. Watching Renteria dance in and out behind Fowler. Twice he has waved off to go on to the plate. In other words, don't step off, don't do anything, don't throw the pick. I'm going back to my position. Trying to creep right in behind Dexter, tighten it up on a base hit. Not uh, much of a chance with his speed to have the ability to throw anybody out. At least try to tighten it up quick enough if it's a hard line drive. Give you a little bit of a chance. Well, took that 94 mile an hour fastball just down in the zone. It's one and two. Todd won for four yesterday in the final ball game in DC. Rockies won at four to one. Swept the season series from the Nationals. Six love.
And Potter, the line drive base hit. And Fowler took a look, and then it goes off the chest of Velez. And help going for two, he's in there. So on the error by Velez, the Rockies get a run, and Helton's now in scoring position. I have a question for you. Why did Dex look and not just pick up Richie Dower and let him make the decision? Well, I'm not, uh, not a little bit surprised by that. He is a coach at third base. Let him make those decisions to send or to hold. But Velez, it looked and it appeared that he closed his glove too quickly in the outfield. Ball hit extremely hard by Todd Helton down and away. Nice job of hitting by Todd again on the Hyundai cam. You can see him extend out over the baseball and take it to the opposite field. A patented swing. The guy who's had a lot of success against Sanchez at the plate right now, Garrett Atkins. Velez is a guy that's been an infielder more in his career than he's been an outfielder <laughs> and that's fielding a hop that that's making an infield play again he butchered it well he did butcher it I, I thought that the ball just hit right off of the glove he just closed it too soon knowing that Dexter Fowler's at second knowing he has speed probably going to have a play at the plate no RBI on that play because Dexter was clearly not going until right, look, the ball was bobbing. Let's look at this play in the outfield again. He just closed too early and it hit right on the outside of the glove and ricocheted off of him. And then Dexter watching the ball in the outfield. It's not going to be caught. No reason to look. None whatsoever. There's no reason to even stop by Dexter Fowler. Because that was the second hop, if I'm not mistaken, when the ball got to Sanchez. It was in. Now there's no question the ball was going to drop. That was a little different. Here's the one two and Atkins is gone. Two outs and that'll bring up Brad Hopp. Take a look at the gloves for San Francisco. Velez is in left. Rowan's a good center fielder. Sheerholt has a big arm in right. Sandoval cat-like quickness at third. Renteria not the range that uh, you saw earlier in his career. Oribe at second. Ishikawa is very good defensively. And Molina has thrown out a slew of base runners this year. Brad, I think, saw that breaking ball pretty well. He swung through it. Brad left on left, hitting 255. Well, if you can get a hit here and another run home, that would be huge after the rough start by Aaron Cook. One of the other things, George, that the Rockies have done in this first inning is they've extended the pitch count, which they're so good at. Next pitch will be the 24th for Sanchez. And to do that on four hitters. Okay, just now with Hop coming to the plate as the fifth hitter of the inning. And he had an opportunity because he had Dexter Fowler one and two. That was a great at bat by Fowler. That's one and two on Hop. Since that no hitter, the league hitting 164. Think about that 164 against Jonathan Sanchez, which is second best in baseball since early July. Now I looked up some stuff. You mentioned that, Drew, and it's surprising to me because look at these overall numbers 114 innings, 97 hits, 64 walks, 120 strikeouts. You would think it'd be different than five and ten. So then you go and look and say, what's the opposition hitting against him with men on base? Maybe it's when he walks a guy. Written 244. It has to do with the fact that the Giants don't score runs. That's downstairs. So now two on for a right-handed bat, Clint Barnes. And Sanchez adds to the pitch count.
a cut through 28. Sanchez right now 16 strikes, 11 balls in the ball game. Barmas with 20 home runs, 64 driven in. Elton at second, Hop at first. Backed off velocity wise on that breaking ball to 81. He threw the one to help at 87 miles an hour. Reach back for a little something extra on that. He's ahead 0 and 2 on Barmas. Barmas does own a home run against Sanchez. Barmas has just 12 hits in the month of August. But half of those hits have gone over the wall. Not this time. Sanchez able to strike out Barmas on three pitches. 30 pitch inning. The Rockies get a run back. Three to one Giants as we go to the second. And we visit with Mark Staff for the first time tonight with tonight's Mike Shaw. Auto update. Mark? Drew George, obviously Troy Tolowitzki not in the lineup. You miss his bat, you miss his glove. You probably don't know, you miss his wheels as well. The Rockies came into this week fourth in stolen bases in the National League, and only two players on the team have double figures in steals. Dexter Fowler, the easy answer with 26. The uneasy answer is Troy Tulowitzki is second on this team with 15 steals. That's after a year ago when he stole a base, one base, and he's already attempted 24 steals this year. And I talked to Tula recently about that. He said, I've been studying David Wright and Matt Holliday and guys like that that can steal bases but also are big guys. He's improved in that role dramatically this year, but that will be missed in the game tonight. Drew, George? Now, Tulowitzki putting it all together now. I mean, you're talking about a guy... It's going to be a 2020 guy in all likelihood this year. This ball rifled down the line. Fortunately, it's fouled by the foot. And George, what are you looking for in the delivery this inning that, that hopefully is different from the first Well, the, the big thing I'm looking for is the extension out over the front leg. Because when you extend to the plate and you're in a downward plane, you're not flat. In other words, Pitching coaches will say rotational where your, your your shoulders are rotating side to side versus from back to bottom And a lot of times guys will do that and when you work side to side You're not allowing your arm to get any kind of an extension down on the baseball That pitch is pretty good a good extension down got a ground ball Now what we're talking about folks is this thing starts to come to the plate watch for the this leg look see for the arm to get out at least down on the fingertips out to that knee and if we can freeze it out front when it gets to that area let it keep coming on through on a, on a roll of the tape here see how the arm came across in this angle first a lot of time this angle right here and that's what gets you the great extension 
strike on Sanchez who's got one hit this year. He's one for 28. He has seven hits in his career at 90 at bats. And he hits this ball to a fairly deep right field, but Brad Hoff will make the catch. Two outs, and that'll bring up Velez again, who grounded the second to begin the ball game. Now the Rockies got great news yesterday, George, because Jason Hamill had been scuffling a little bit. He threw out a gem, seven innings of one-run baseball. I mean, he pounded the strike zone. That was as good as we've seen Hamill, and we've seen him very good. He had that five-game winning streak back in late May and June. He has the stuff to win a lot of ball games. He has the stuff to win 12 to 15 ball games at the big league level. And his comments in the morning's paper, he scrapped the sinker and went back to just forcing fastball and basically grip it, grip it, and if you hit it, you hit it. And uh, pounded the strike zone, worked ahead. And when you're ahead in the count, with his nasty curveball and slider, it makes things a lot easier on you as a pitcher. On the ground, foul. Hamill gave up just three hits in seven innings last night. A couple of walks struck out three. Betancourt was spotless again, and Street had a 1 2 3 ninth for his 30 second save, 24th in a row, as the Rockies defeated the Nationals 4 1. Here's Houston, and if you're wondering why he wasn't not down in the bullpen, it's not unusual for your closer to start the ball game. In the dugout. Yeah, about 90% of them start the ball game in the dugout, go in and heat their arms up and keep moving with it. Marmus had that throw almost get away from him. One, two, three inning in the second for Cook. Chris Ionetta and Tulowitzki can't be here in person, but he's still represented in the Rockies dugout. There's the uh, two little bobblehead atop the water cooler and the Gatorade cooler. Inside, ball one on Ionetta. And Sanchez misses on the first two deliveries. And it's 2 and 0. Oh. Chris has been trying all year, George, to find a, a rhythm at the plate. Right now, show flashes of what he did a year ago. That's obvious with the home runs 14 RBIs, 49. Yet the average, nowhere near what you're used to seeing out of Chris Ionetta, just 2 221. Sliders in there 
for a strike two and two. Yeah, it's interesting that he has not hit for a high average, just a 197 since the break. But his 18 RBIs is third among catchers in the National League since the All-Star break. Not this time. Bill up empty with a swing and a mess. McCann with 25, Montero with 24, Ionetta with 18. Time for a jack in the box. Going outside the box. Colorado and the Giants, four wins apiece. The Rockies have scored more runs, and they have the much lower ERA. Basically, when the Giants have won games, it's been very close. When the Rockies have won the games, more often than not, they've won by a comfortable margin. Ian Stewart at the plate. All of that brought to you by Jack in the Box. Right now, try the mini Buffalo Ranch chicken sandwiches, three mini home-style chicken fillets on toasted mini buns. Rockies trying to cut down on the strikeouts. They struck out 13 times last night in the 4-1 win. On the road trip, they struck out 65 times in six games. That's too, too Way many. too many. For a ball club that, quite honestly, folks, has some of the best hitters in the National League with Ed Helton in the top ten, Brad Hopp near the top ten. And Stewart's in a tough place, as is Ionetta right now. Stewart last night at the Golden Sombrero. Four at-bats, four punch-outs. And a 2-1 just missed. I'll tell you something. Jim Joyce has a pretty tight zone tonight. He's not given the outside corner, and I know what pitch you're referencing to. The one to Todd Helton on the outside corner cutter that was right on the black knees that he did not call for a strike. Three and two on Stewart. 0 for his last 11. Two for 19 on the road trip. Talking to Carney Lansford, the hitting coach for the Giants, who was in AAA with the Rockies a couple of years ago and worked with Stewart and Ionetta. He mentioned to me he was surprised by where their averages were. He knows they have a ton of talent. And Ionetta, or excuse me, Stewart, like Ionetta, overmatched on that fastball. Two punch outs, two outs. And because of that hard, hard slider that he possesses, and then the pinpoint with the outside corner on the fastball looking on the Hyundai cam to watch Stewart and see his first motion on the baseball. See how the knees collapse and go away and it swung at it as if it was a nasty slider versus a fastball to the outside corner. Well, when you're scuffling a bit, George, this is not an easy guy to face. He well, has outstanding stuff. And you see guys take swings like that when they're scuffling. And, and again, as a pitcher, I used to look for those avenues to, to get guys out. And you look for that because it, it tells you they're not seeing the ball well out of the hand. They're not picking up the rotation of the baseball out of the hand. Two and one on Cook. Time for tonight's Quest high speed pitch. Sanchez is hit 95. Aaron Cook at 92. Brought to you by Quest high speed internet. It's fouled off. Aaron's knocked in four this year. He'll always give you a competitive at bat. People always ask you, why do pitchers become better hitters? Well, when they first sign at the minor league level, very rarely do you swing the bat till you get to double A, and that's only against National League teams. So there's that period of four or five years you don't even pick a bat up except once a month on Sunday that those guys get to swing it. This ball's hit pretty well right center field. Aaron Rowan chases it down. He was shaded in that direction. So Cook gave it a ride, a one, two, three inning for Sanchez. Giants up three to one as we go to the third.
470 Road Ahead is brought to you by E470 and Express Toll, the best way to save time and money. Three more with the Giants. It's one of those four-game sets that will carry to Monday, and then the Dodgers come a-calling Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoon, and then the Rockies will see the Giants again at AT&T Park on the West Coast. Drew Goodman, George Frazier. Back at Coors Field, we go to the top of the third inning. The Rockies trailing 3-1. to one. We are joined by the first of three first-round picks of the Rockies this year, Tyler Matzik, high school kid from San Diego. Welcome. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, excited? Yep. Your first uh, taste of being around the Rockies at the big league level, what were your uh, thoughts initially? Uh, when I walked out on the stadium, I thought it was the most beautiful stadium I've seen in, in the country. And I've been around to some, so... It's, it's really a, a great atmosphere. Well, we're very pleased to, to welcome you into the Rockies family and to give you an opportunity to do what's been a dream of yours, I'm sure, for quite some time, and that's to play professional baseball. Yes. Edgar Renteria at the plate, and his 0-1 pitch is popped up in the neighborhood of Ian Stewart, and he makes the catch. All right, I'm going to ask you to do something you're probably uncomfortable with, but that's okay, because I get to ask the questions tonight. All right. <laughs> give... give, give, give be a scouting report to give everybody at home a scouting report on yourself um i'm a left-handed pitcher uh grew up in mission viejo california throw uh fastball curveball slider and change up um my fastballs lives around 90 to 94 right around there um i like to use my curveball i like to throw a lot of a lot of off speed and my best pitch would probably be my fastball though well, I noticed at Aflac a year ago when I did the broadcast there, the thing that impressed me about you and Perk also, and I know Perk became a friend of yours along with Jacob Turner, you guys had great command of the fastball on both sides of the plate, which obviously set up everything else yeah. uh, for you to do. And I think playing in California among the competition that you have to on a daily basis there uh, obviously teaches you to pitch probably at a higher level than maybe most guys out of the Midwest. Yeah, California is a great, great talent spot. Um, a lot of great hitters there. Uh, especially one like in the Colorado Rockies organization, uh, Nolan Arenado. He's a great hitter. I faced him a couple times. Um, so, I'd say, so wait a minute, who gets to talk trash then? <coughs> you or him? Uh, I, I, I wanted that. <laughs> I struck him out. I you know I what? It. Arenado, though, is doing a very nice <coughs> yes, job he right is. now. He Casper is. is really swinging the bat well. How hard is it going to be for you to give the bat up for a while? Um, I don't know. Hopefully I can still keep swinging it in batting practice, but... Uh, you know, I knew I was a pitcher, and I've always been a pitcher, so. Well, let me help you out. If you throw 94 and you're left-handed, stay on the bump. Don't think about first base, okay? All right. All right, Tyler, we're going we're gonna, to have such a quick inning for Aaron Cook, which was great to see. We're going to keep you around if you don't mind, all right? No problem. You got it. 3-1 San Francisco back in a moment. CSU Rams football season tickets and many plans are on sale now. Visit CSURams.com for more details. Rams football defend the fort 
And they have a big one coming up against the University of Colorado right here in early September. Drew Goodman, George Frazier, Tyler Matzik, who is a left-handed pitcher out of high school. And he was rated by most as the top high school pitcher in the country. And maybe the number one left-hander in the country that was available. And throughout the negotiations, and I know it's part of the business, and all of a sudden you go from high school and, and now you, you realize that... Uh, you have to make business decisions. You have representatives that, that help you with that process. How tough was it to, to sit on the sidelines? It was a tough. It was very tough. Um, you know, you're just sitting around waiting. It's it's really just a mind game, and, and you just sit around waiting for that uh, that phone call. And it comes it really comes down to that that last minute decision. What's your gut feeling? That's a pod. Dexter Fowler, one and two. What do the Rockies have planned for you now that you are signed? I think the plan is for me to go up to Casper, Wyoming, uh, finish, help finish that season, and then uh, try, I think, try cities, and then instructs. And then shut it down in spring training. Huh? Well, not shut it down, then, yeah. then keep working out all the way through till spring training. Okay. So. Well, I think the big thing to realize now to, at this point, it's a process. Um, and you've been able to have a tremendous amount of success uh, through your high school career, and I think uh, one thing but you will learn in professional baseball, it is a process. And a lot of guys, as they start to try to rush it, experience failure before they experience success. Yeah. Um, and, and you're going to go out and you're going to face some very, very good, talented college hitters uh, that know what they're doing out in the league. And it, it's, a, it's a business now. And it's fun. It's a fun business to get into. Yeah. When I, I had the uh, Affleck game, I met Joe Torre. And one of the things Joe Torre told me was, you guys all up to this time have probably not failed much, but when you get to the major leagues, you're going to be failing a lot. And you did, the people who can get over that are the ones who are going to succeed in the, in the end. So I took that took that to heart. And well, how many starts did you make in high school this year, 12, 13? No, I made uh, 15. You know, you know, your first full year in baseball, you're going to make about 30. Yeah. I mean, it just gets doubled up. The innings, the work, everything gets doubled up. Well, another good at bat by Fowler behind 0-2. He earns a free trip. What did you know about the Rockies going into the draft? I'm sure you've been following them very closely ever since you were selected in June. But, but honestly, what did you know about them? Um, I knew they're a great organization, really uh, family-oriented, and uh, relation, yeah, great relationships between the players and management. And uh, I just knew it was a great organization to get with, and I was lucky to be selected by them. You know Rex Brothers at all? Uh, yes. Sort of. Left, yeah, okay. Doing a nice job. He was selected later on mm -hmm. on the first 34 picks. Left-handed reliever doing a, doing a very good job. Just advanced to Asheville. Has yet to give up a run in Asheville. Four really? outings for him there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Coming out of the bullpen doing a nice job. That's good. Just walking around the clubhouse. What, what did you notice in the clubhouse? And again, what were your initial... You know, thoughts running through the brain. And everybody Ball hit the center field, but Rowan's right there. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Todd. I was just gonna say everybody in there was was real nice. Um, you know, they all talked to me, and, and there are a bunch of good guys. But was there a guy in particular? I mean, you're, you're still a kid. I mean, was there a guy in particular that you were really excited about meeting? Um, I'd say Todd Helton, just because he's got. I mean, sure. he's he's Mr. Colorado, so uh, I was excited to meet him and, and Ian Stewart too, because he's from my area. Right. Well, here he is at the plate. He singled his first time up. Rockies trail three to one. Fowler at first with one out. And that's a strike on the corner. Well, this is a guy who's a lefty who, like yourself, has a plus fastball. He has a very good slider. The guy that you know, had mixed success, Tyler, until July 10th, and he threw that no-hitter, and he's kind of taken off since then. Is your guy you've patted yourself after? Um, I'd say, I know with the steroids, it's not a good thing, but uh, I'd say Roger Clemens, just the way that he mixes up the game, and he thinks about it pitch by pitch. Maddox, or Maddox does it great, too. He thinks about it one pitch at a time, breaks down a, a whole game, and just tiny situation and that, that really helps. Helton hits this one pretty well. Rowan moving back and he makes the catch. 
And the Rockies squared two up in a row, George, and uh, nothing to show yeah, for. Yeah, they have. Two balls that got up a little bit into the strike zone. Helton busted that ball to left field for a base hit in his last at bat. This ball carried a little bit of flight into center field. Well, I think the one advice I could give you, and I spent uh, quite a number of years in the minor leagues and the big leagues, mostly in the big leagues, but uh, the one thing that was taught to me by a guy named Jim Cott that won 287 games in the big leagues is don't resist change, but sometimes change doesn't always work for you, but to listen to learn because the guys that are teaching you are trying to help you to become better. The guys that have been around have been placed in situations to make pitchers better, to teach you the game of the baseball because there's so much more to the game than just going to the mound. Yeah. Uh, and throw on a baseball. George was kidding you about the bat. How good are you with the bat? He's uh, pretty good, I'll tell you. That's okay. what I heard. <laughs> I'll brag for him. He's pretty good with the bat. Thank you. And at first base, hand on the glove. Thank you. So you've been taking a little BP still with the, with the summer or just throwing bullpen? No, I've been taking some BP. Um, you know, I go to this place where you get to hit as many balls as you want for free, so I just... Just hitting on stop. There you go. Atkins at the plate. He struck out his first time. Outside. Now, did you play another sport in high school? I did. I played I played football, but I didn't play my senior year because um, I didn't want to risk injury or anything like that. Understandable. Pretty clear then you were going to go pretty high in the draft. What did you play? Were you a quarterback? Actually, I wasn't. I was a uh, wide receiver and strong safety. Well, strong and free safety. Okay. I saw another young man upstairs. Your mother and father are both here. Yes. Anybody else in the family stop by with you? Or? Yeah, I got my uh, my four brothers, uh, Jeff, Ryan, Kyle, and Michael. So they all made the visit with me. Younger or okay, older? Hold on. Time out. Yeah, where are you in the pecking order? I'm in the, right in the middle. I you got are? two older, two younger. Are they ball players? Uh, my two younger brothers are... are Ball players, they'll probably both be playing at at uh, Capistrano. Capistrano Valley High School. My younger brother still's got to make the freshman team, but I feel like he should. Any Not like you're going to try to influence the coach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any left-handed pitcher? No, we got a uh, shortstop and a catcher. Okay. See, the catching thing works out good. Yeah. For you, you got somebody to catch up. Yep. You know, it's great, Tyler. You look out here, and not too many empty seats. Crowd, I'm guessing, will be around 45,000 or so tonight. It'll be like that all series long as the Rockies have made this a special season. And I think one thing that you should look at and notice about this ball club more than anything else is you know a lot of kids feel like that opportunities present themselves or you present them yourself but if you look around this outfield and this infield every single guy in this lineup every single guy is a homegrown guy out of the rockies organization yep that just shows how how well the rockies are developing their players and, and getting them to the big leagues and, and sticking true to their guys three and two and the guy who's sick tonight who you know all about troy chulewitzki who's another california kid is homegrown as well. First round pick like yourself. Did you look in at that run of 2007? What was that? When the Rockies made the run in 2007. Mm -hmm. Were you paying close attention then? I was playing pretty good attention. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Runner going on the 3-2 pitch and Atkins is gone. Hey, Tyler, again, big congratulations, and uh, we welcome you, and uh, I know in the not-too-distant future you'll be right out there. Congratulations to you and your family. Thank you. You bet. That's Tyler Matzik, everybody.
Top of the fourth, let's get you the Aflac trivia question for the night. Earlier I was talking about stolen bases with the Rockies, and a guy that's been instrumental in that is Carlos Gonzalez, not playing tonight, but on this day a year ago, he was thrown out for the first time in the big leagues. He's only been thrown out one time this year. He's 12 for 14 in his young career. Here's the question. What is the major league record for steals in a season without being caught? We'll get you that answer coming up as we go back to the booth, guys. All right, Mark, thank you very much. Nate Shearholtz will lead it off in the fourth inning. He had a sack fly in the first when the Giants scored three times. Seven straight retired by Aaron Cook. And he bounces that one up there. It's 2-0. and Aaron had a six-pitch inning in the third. In retiring 2-3-4 in the Giants lineup. And it's 3-0. and yeah, Tyler Matzik, a nice young man. You know, the last couple of months... He was waiting and waiting for that day that he knew he could sign that big league contract. And it finally arrived. Congratulations to the Rockies, George, signing all three of their top picks and their first 30 draft picks overall. Well, I think there was some question of whether they would be able to do Uh oh, you got Doogie, you got Tracy, you got Aaron yeah, Cook. That's, that's not a good sign, folks. No, four pitches out of the strike zone. I don't know if Aaron Cook called Ionetta out or if the toe's bothering him again or well, what the see. situation is, but. This is so not I, I what tell you, no, I you tell were you, looking for. And the guy that knows the answer is Ionetta, the guy catching. You, you, he just said fog. Yep. You, you could hear Jim Tracy, or you could see it, read his lips. So get fog. That's it. They're not going to have Aaron Cook to throw a, a pitch to see whatever's ailing him if, if it feels okay. Aaron Cook will depart. After three innings and one batter. Now let's look and see. You notice how he's got his hands on his hip, but you think it's the back again? Maybe the toe again. Let's watch and see after the pitch. When he throws this, he's going to look towards the dugout. Grimmett's in a little pain on his backside, and then he's going to ask Dewey to come out. And it's hard to tell because he's limping a little bit, George, and, and you know because you've had some back issues. If your back's bothering you, you might limp a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're going to limp a little bit. But it, it could be the toe also. Yeah, I mean, there's no telling. Josh Fogg will get all the time he needs, and hopefully we'll get an answer from Jay Alvis downstairs quickly. But as Josh Fogg comes on, George, very real concern now. Obviously, Aaron has not pitched like Aaron of late, and he's had the toe injury. He now has to leave this ball game very early after lasting just two and a third down in Florida. And you're talking about the top of your staff. Well, the guy very, who pitched opening day. Well, there's 22 guys in the National League with 10-plus wins. Four of them, the Giants, we're going to see in this series. The four Rockies starting pitchers in this series, Aaron Cook being one of those at 10-5. and five. To lose that out of your rotation, and, of course, you're jumping out there. It could be back spasms. could be a couple of other things that could be cured uh, rather quickly and get back out of the mound. You don't know that. What you do know is something's not right yep. and, ha and has not been right because Aaron has not been himself uh, for the last few weeks. Well, Josh Fogg will get as much time as he wants in, in preparation to start the, his quest here in the fourth inning. There's nobody out in the runner at first base on an injury. You get as much as you want. Well, well, Fogg continues to get loose. We'll step aside for a moment, and we'll continue the conversation. We'll
teams. Our good friends at College Invest can help you get started. We've done it. We hope you will as well. They've also asked me to help dispel a common myth. You can use your College Invest savings anywhere in the country. California to Florida to New York, whether it's a university or a junior college or a specialized trade school such as the California Culinary School in San Francisco or the Academy of Radio Broadcasting in Los Angeles or maybe a Barber's College in Orlando. Check them out, collegeinvest.org. George is ready to send uh, his last one off to college. Already put a couple through college. We're, we're, we're a ways down the road, but... Thankfully, with our 529 plans with College Invest, uh, we're going to be prepared for those days. Well, Keith Duggar, who does such a marvelous job as the lead trainer for the Rockies, visiting with Bob Apodaca concerning whatever ails Aaron Cook. Josh Fogg continuing to get loose. Whenever somebody leaves with an injury, as George mentioned, you get as many pitches as you need. Let's check in again with Mark Stout. Mark? All right, Drew, let's answer the athletic trivia question of the night. It's about stolen bases. And I noticed that last year Carlos Gonzalez was thrown out one time when he was with the A's. It was on this day, and this year he's only been thrown out once. Question is, major league record for going through an entire season without getting thrown out, stealing, and it's a surprising answer. Kevin McReynolds of the Mets in 1988 stole 21 bases without getting thrown out. The next year in 89, he stole one, and then Darren Dalton of the Phillies threw him out in late April, but Kevin McReynolds, Tulo was talking about some of these guys, Matt Holliday, David Wright, Tulo, they can steal some bases, and Kevin McReynolds has that record, guys. Well, Kevin McReynolds is similar to the guys that Tulowitzki was yep. mentioning, Mark, as you know. Kevin McReynolds is a big, strong guy who hit the ball over the wall, and you'd see him at first base, you'd think, well, was probably station-to-station -station guy. No, he could run. And he picked his spots well, evidently, based on the information that Mark just passed along. Travis Ishikawa, Nate Sheerholtz at first. And this is a ground ball to second. It's bobbled, and Stewart won't get anybody. And that's a tough one. Now there's two on and nobody out. And at the very least, you hope to get the lead runner. George, it almost looked like Stewart was getting ready to, to fire to second before he had corralled the baseball. And it's been a while since he's been over at second base. No excuse for that. I mean, this ball's two hop, two steps. Should have made a play on the baseball. Just rolled up the arm, got through the legs. And not an opportunity to get anybody out. Look on the Hyundai cam right here. And then the ball just hit off the side of the glove. Whether it was taking the eye off, checking the runner's distance to second, where the play would go. Nonetheless, the play not made. Aaron yesterday made two highlight reel plays at third. So Fod's in a tough spot. Rockies already trailed by a couple of runs. Sanchez is throwing the ball very well. And now you have two on and nobody out. Aaron Rowan at the plate. Trying to keep this baseball game close. And he's going to have to be out there for a while. Two and one on Rowan. You know, we mentioned that Rowan was eight for 16 coming into the ball game, but overall, he's been scuffling with the bat. He had the forearm injury that prevented him from playing defensively for a while. Hitting 161 over his last 29 games. This ball to deep right. <laughs> Three-run home run for Aaron Rowan. And now the Rockies really have a hill to climb. It is six to one. Eleventh home run, 51 RBIs for Aaron Rowan now. Signed as a free agent a couple of years ago. Playing very well in center field. Has battled a few injuries and uh, comes up big when he needed to in this game against the Rockies to make it a six to one ball game. The fog. Uh, you know, I always found it difficult to come in to the middle of the ball game. But yet do a job. You look back to it, the area of uh, Ian Stewart at second base could have been a double play ball to end the inning. One guy, nobody on base. Didn't happen. Still have to make the pitch. And Rowan happened to uh, hit the ball into right center field. 
Now, Roland is a guy that has to hit for the Giants to be successful. You know they're going to pitch, but they don't have a ton of guys offensively. Rowan needs to be one of their run producers. He dropped a seventh in the lineup with his recent scuffles, but he has a three-run home run. He's got 51 RBIs now. And Uribe with a one and two count. George, you give the Giants six runs, man, they are really tough to beat. Well, you've got the pitching staff, and then again, their bullpen, Affeld on the left side of it, Howard, Metters, Miller, Romo, Velez, all good arms, and then you've got the big right-hander at the very end of this thing, Wilson, to come and close out a ball game. I mean, it's not an easy team to deal with. Play for Ryan Adam. Well, the Giants this year, when they score four runs or more, are 47 and 12. The Rockies are going to have to get after the guy who's wandering to the plate right now, Jonathan Sanchez. Book closed on Aaron Cook. He goes three plus, allows four runs on three hits, a couple of walks, no strikeouts. And as soon as we get an update from the Rockies clubhouse on why he was removed we will pass it along you know guys that uh, pitch in long relief difficult job on a club because you really are coming in when you're out of the ball game or you got a eight or nine run lead and you get to pitch the ninth inning fog's done a nice job in that role for the rockies this year josh fog's numbers 219 earned run average 37 innings 22 hits given up the opposition's hit a buck 75 against him he has now given up four home runs well, don't forget the Rockies where they are right now with the lead into the wild card. Start thinking about it. If you are not already season ticket holder, the best way to guarantee your opportunity to purchase 2009 postseason tickets to make a 2010 season ticket deposit or purchase the stretch run ticket packages available by the Rockies. The stretch run package has all remaining games this season at discounted prices, but this limited time will end. This offer will end. August the 31st. 303 Rockies or go online to ColoradoRockies.com for more information. Velez at the plate. He takes ball one. Giants have six runs, only four hits. Ground is short. Barmas has to hurry and he'd stay on the bag. He did. Todd stayed on the bag with the toe. Velez retired. In the inning, three runs for the Giants. A walk, an error, and a three run home run off the bat of Aaron Rowan.
Giants up 6-1, bottom of the fourth inning. The American Cancer Society saves lives and creates more birthdays by helping you stay well, get well, find cures, and fight back. The American Cancer Society is in your community. For more information, go to cancer.org and stop by your local King Supers today and look for the purple canisters to make a donation of support. Brad Hoppel lead it off against Sanchez. And he takes ball one. Brad walked in the first inning. He's got a run back in the first. Sanchez has struck out five in three innings. Rockies have a four-game winning streak. They've won eight of 11 overall. Jim Joyce, one of those guys, he doesn't need a megaphone. So when they mic up the umpire on Big Fox Saturdays, he's not one that needs one. Doesn't need it. <laughs> Comes right through your television loud and clear. Hop is gone. That is six strikeouts for Sanchez. Geico quote of the day, Bruce Bochy, the biggest thing is to have a swagger when you take the field. When you're not going well, you have to change something. You have to walk like you belong with the best, go up to the plate like you know you belong with the best. That's swagger. You can't play this game without confidence, whether you toe the rubber or step in the batter's box. Well, it's a very humbling game. It's all about failure more than it is success. It's time when you go out there, particularly as a position player. I think it's the trust factor a manager has in position players that when they are struggling that you continue to put out because of history of what they've done in the past. Just hope they rekindle and catch fire with. It. Three and oh on Barnes. You know you mentioned uh, and you and I were talking prior to the ball game. What has made the Rockies good. And. You know, you talk about because they haven't hit like you thought they would hit. I mean, overall, in the average. And you and I were talking, and, it, and we mentioned at the time, I said, pitching and defense. They're not, they lead the, they lead the league in the least amount of walks, so they're not putting added men on base. They're like third in the league in strikeouts. And what's amazing, they put the ball in play 1,578 times prior to tonight on the ground. That's where you bring the defense in. Right. That, you're talking, you're talking about from the pitching staff. Talking to the pitching yeah. staff on the side of the pitching staff. Of, you know, why is this team done so well? The starting pitching had four starters with, with 10 wins or more. There's only 22 in the National League total. Their defense is impeccable. I mean, the plays made by Stewart yesterday at third base saved three doubles. I and that, uh, that, man, that keeps happening more and more, George. You know, I know, you know, I used to ask Dave Winfield, why you let go of the bat all the time? And it's like it gets around to the thumb area, and it's kind of in a torqued position. And, it, and it's like they just, it hurts, so they let go. So they don't uh, sprain a, a thumb or, or a wrist that they get too far. That's they got pine tar, they got gloves, they got everything on the bat. That's three times in a week where. See, that whole bottom hand just went off the bat. Yeah, Chris has Completely. lost the bat into the seats. Benji Molina if the Rockies have surprised him and he said not at all he said he remembers in spring training telling a couple of teammates in a conversation he said you know what they're selling the Rockies short talking about the media he said I think they're going to be really good he said one thing I am surprised that I thought they'd be really good because of their offense he said there's good hitters up and down that lineup he said the, the, they have they have good pitching he goes but to the level they've pitched so far, he said that that part had surprised him. But he thought all along that the Rockies were going to be a very formidable club. And Benji, you, know, you don't know him at home. Benji's a really honest guy. If he didn't think that, he wouldn't just give you. Well, he related. You know, he, he, related he wouldn't just tell you that. Well, he relayed that story to you at uh, Barry Bonds, where he just said, "Hey, I'm over Barry. Get him out of here." A lot of Giants, and he was in the locker room when he was a teammate. He's well, not I scared mean, to he, say he, his piece. Yeah, I mean, he cleaned it up a little bit there, but. The point was well taken. 6-1.
15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And by Dex, take the sport out of finding local information with Dex and print online at dexknows.com. Edgar Renteria takes ball one from Josh Fogg in relief of Aaron Cook, who lasted three innings and one batter and then had to depart with some sort of ailment. And we do not have word yet from the Rockies clubhouse as to why Cook was removed. One and one on Renteria, a single and a pop to second. Rockies trailing six to one. Drew Goodman, George Frazier, and Mark Stout. And now we are getting word from the Rockies clubhouse. A, it, it's not either things that we had speculated about. We thought maybe the toe. We thought maybe the back, which on occasion had bothered Aaron Cook. It is his right shoulder. Yeah, that's even a little more alarming. Yeah, obviously, absolutely. That that's that's worse than. Uh, than the either than, than the other two uh, options. Let's look at the pitch one more time from Aaron Cook in the fourth inning as he led off against Sherholz. He bounced that ball on the plate. I mean, just totally cut it off. And as he threw the pitch, he just grimaced and he walked over there and he started waving. Yep, come on, boys. And you could tell George with that delivery because I think it bothered him maybe before that. There was no, and you look at this a lot, George. You could break down pitchers left and right. There was no arm speed on that. Well, there was delivery. no arm speed. More important for me is the elbow started to come, everything collapsed to the bottom to take pressure off the shoulder on that last pitch. I mean, unfortunate for Aaron Cook, obviously, more unfortunate for the Rockies. And, you know, I will say this for Aaron Cook there's a lot of guys that were young. The ball's going to get out of the reach of Clint Harmless and beyond Garrett Atkins for a base hit into the outfield. That Young guys probably would have said, I pitch through it, I pitch through it. You know, they would have tried to go out and pitch. And whereas a veteran guy felt something that wasn't right, wasn't normal, and he said something immediately to try to limit the damage. Yeah. I mean, we're around Aaron all the time. There, he is a tough, tough guy. And for him to step out, he knew something wasn't right. You know, you wonder, and there's no way to determine this, George, but the body shattered back, fouled off by Sandoval. The body compensates, and sometimes when you have another injury, you're doing something maybe in your delivery or mechanics that you don't realize you're doing that's compromising well, some that, other part of your body. Well, not only, it's guys with a bad knee, pitch with a bad knee. All of a sudden they go, man, it really hurts to extend. Let me get my elbow up a little bit higher. Then you start to twist the ball different ways. You know, all of a sudden, it's the wrist doesn't feel comfortable, so you work around baseball sometimes. That's when you create pressure on an elbow. Other parts of the body that ache will dictate something you do at times with your arm or your delivery that creates a bigger problem than what, you're, what you need to have. The Rockies this year have been one of the most fortunate clubs in that, I mean, day after well, day, their rotation rolled out, you know, started with Cook, Jimenez, Marquis. Hamill De La Rosa and well, they would start all over again on the fifth deck. Look at 2007. There was not a lot of big injuries and that's how teams win the divisions. They are able to put their first guys out in the forefront and, and get them innings and get them starts and they don't get hurt and they keep you in ball games. And you, know, and you start to look down a lot of different clubs and it, it, this is something that you look at. You know, the Giants have three starters that have had 25 starts this year. The Rockies on the other hand their top four starters, their top five, honestly. De La Rosa has uh, one relief out. They've all made their starts. They haven't missed a tick. Yeah, Marquis, the Rockies, a 14 game winner, joining a group with the most wins in baseball. That's outside, and it's three and one on Sandoval. Assuming now that, that Aaron Cook's going to miss some time. That man may move to the forefront. The former Padre, the former most recently Baltimore Oriole in the big leagues. The Rockies picked up a couple of months ago and brought him to the big leagues a little more than a week ago. Adam Eaton. He may have to take that rotation spot. Runner going, swung on a miss, throw to second, and is not in time. 
So stolen base for Renteria, his sixth. A uh, big jump by Renteria at first base. Sandoval with the swing. Watch up on top. Renteria straight down head, straight steal. And then I think that probably threw a little bit off as Ionetta started to rush. That ball sailed and tailed away on a throw down to second base. at how he had to throw over the top of the bat of Sandoval on the follow through all natural it was not something done on purpose by Sandoval popped up foul ground it's going to be back in the seats Near the Rockies George gave one star to Jolie's Chassin and he obviously did not pitch well. He walked six in that game. Then he went down to AAA and was part of a no-hitter. He reached his pitch count after five and a third no-hit innings. He's putting a lot, you know, if you brought him back, he's got a lot of upside, but he's putting a lot of pressure on a young kid right, in a pennant race. Threw a couple of bullpens after starting and then coming here and working in the bullpen in that one last start. Extra out to handle this fairly easy. I don't know if Victoria can advance very shallow to center field. He won't. Throw in for Dexter. But when he went back, he threw bullpens for a couple of times and then he went into the rotation. Drew mentioned five and a third innings of no hit baseball that the Triple A ball club had the other day in Oklahoma City. Uh, you know, do you bring him up and put him in that spot? Do you try Ismail Rogers? Is, the, is there a roster spot on the 40 man roster if you did not want to choose someone that's here, either Fogg or Adam Eaton, uh, that may be throwing well? Like Brandon Heineck won to his 10th game. In Triple A, Alan Johnston won his tenth game last night in Triple A. Samuel Dodano has won ten games in Double A. Here's Benji Molina with one out. He had a ground rule double back in the first inning to drive in a run. Big areas of strength within the Rockies organization. They have some pitching coming, but there's a whole different deal. It's a whole different deal, I should say, between winning games in Tulsa, Oklahoma, winning games in Colorado Springs, and now being asked to step in front of 45,000 people. Oh, by well, the way, in a pennant race. We always used to call it double deck center, and they walk out and said, Oh my, where'd these people come from? And there's four umpires, not three. And it's a whole different atmosphere the travel the off the field stuff that has to be taken care of as an individual player uh, You're not called when the bus is leaving you're just told and if you're not there find your own way to the ballpark I mean there's a lot of things that go involved in being in a big leagues and You've got to be mentally and physically stable enough and ready to come handle that and oh by the way uh, the Rockies are at a pinnacle <laughs> They had even that much more pressure uh, to a young kid coming up so you know, I mean, it's just, uh, it, it's one of those deals. You've got a couple of guys to choose from, Fogg and Eden. If it's that far along, uh, that Cook had to leave with the shoulder. Nate Sheerholtz, a sack fly on a walk. He was driven one in, and he scored a run. He was the last batter that Aaron Cook faced. Walked on four pitches, and then Aaron motioned for Jim Tracy and Keith Duggar to come out of the dugout. Windshield chipped or cracked. Don't wait. Call Colorado's number one team, Elite Safe Light Auto Glass, 303 287 5000, or visit safelight.com. Field pretty well hit. Fowler turns, runs to his spot, and he's going to make the catch. The defense by Dexter as he lobs a souvenir to the crowd out in center field. 6 1, middle of five. Giants leading.
inning. Against Jonathan Sanchez, who has struck out seven. He's allowed one hit. That was a Todd Helton single left in the first inning. Swung on and missed. Strike count on Stewart. Rockies have played great baseball at Coors Field after a tough first 20 games. Stewart is gone on strikes again. That is six straight strikeouts now for Ian. And that'll bring up Josh Fogg. Let's check in again with Mark Stout. Mark. Oh, I drew you guys were talking about double deck syndrome. I thought I'd give the upper deck a little love here. Decks this date in history. 1978. Jason Marquis is born in Manhasset, Long Island. He's from Staten Island. I talked to Jason today. He's very proud of his Little League alma mater, the South Shore Little Leaguers. They're playing in Williamsport in the Little League World Series, and they had a big win today, 10 to 2. Also born on this day. Three years ago, his son Andrew in Staten Island, and I said, what happened? It was during the baseball season. Well, guess what? They were in New York playing the Mets. So it all worked out. So happy birthday to Andrew Marquis and to Jason Marquis as well, guys. Yeah, we second that. Yeah, good luck to the uh, Staten Island Little Leaguers. It's a great time of year. Two O's in there on Fog, two and one. Houston and James Street share a birthday, father and son. That ball four, five. Yeah, this is easy. Flips the bat away. Josh goes to first. Kind of been a Jonathan Sanchez performance, George. Eight punch outs, four walks, only one run, one hit. The thing he's been able to do is that outside corner with the fastball, hard slider. He worked that against Stewart. He's worked that down and in slider on Ionetta. Pitch count at 86 after throwing, what, 25 in the first? Here's that second hit. There's the second hit. You're right. The Dexter. Reaches for the third time in the game. He's one for one and two walks. And that'll bring Spielborgs up, who hit it hard last time. Never has really been on cruise control. 13 in the fourth. That's the shortest inning after 30 in the first. Nine here in the fifth. Wow, George, your old teammate Rags out there. I mean, giving up two hits, struck out eight. Well, in the fifth, why is he coming out? Well, a little visit with him, get the ball back in the strike zone, trying to work ahead of the hitters instead of behind the hitters all the time. Long conversation with Rigetti today prior to the ball game, and uh, he's very satisfied with his pitching staff, what they have done, what the bullpen has done. Would like to get one more lefty down in the bullpen. Of course, there's a lot of clubs that would like to have that, but he said, my job sure is a lot simpler. And I can run Kane, Lincecum, even Zito now, Sanchez. I'd be shocked if he said anything but that to you. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, we did rip on a few other guys, but. That's not to like about that rotation. Yeah, they, you and know, they, they hope to get back the future Hall of Famer Randy Johnson maybe in September. Well, you know, to me, that's kind of tough. Rotator cuff, I mean, the whole deal. I mean, that's just something hard to pitch with. Trying to change some angles around, maybe. Maybe that would do some good for you. One and one on spillboards. Oh. 
Yeah, one of the top pitching prospects in baseball, Madison Bumgarner, who just turned 20 three weeks ago. They have said they are not going to bring him up. He was 15 and 3 last year. He's dominating again. Well, he started the year in California League and was moved to Double A. He and Tim Alderson, another guy that was one of their high prospects, he was traded. Alderson was the Cleveland Indians for Darker. He no, he went to Pittsburgh. I'm sorry, Freddie Sanchez. Right. Fred, for Freddie Sanchez. Six four three double play off the bat of Ryan Spielborgs. We'll go to the. Fifteen games above 500 after being as many as 12 under 500 earlier this season. Check this out. Only six teams in big league history have gone from 12 under to 15 over in one season. Most recently, it happened in 2005. Remember the Astros were 15 and 30 and they flipped it around under Phil Garner and the A's in 2005. At one point, were 12 under and ended up... Uh, 15 plus over Some kind of turnaround for the Rockies Jim Tracy doesn't like to call it a run This is we're a good baseball team and I agree with him. Well, they are a very good baseball team The starting pitching has been one of the best staffs in baseball since the turnaround started the bullpen very much solidified with Bimal and Betancourt You know run happens over 10 days two yeah. weeks George when, when it's three months. It's not a run No, it's not a run. You're just playing good baseball I mean, Matt Daly's done a nice job down in the bullpen for the Rockies and what he's had to do for them and in the situations He's had to work in uh, But Jim Tracy's given a common calming influence over this ball club Help them to be able to get in a position where they are and I think Jason Marquis started to feel that role More of a veteran guy with some of the pitchers in, in the clubhouse and where he has been as a player Now ball tough chance for Stewart and he makes it well done by Ian Stewart You know who that reminded me of a little bit George here's a name from the past didn't play second base played shortstop Ray Ordonez remember he used to power slide oh, yeah, to the knees? The yep sure did to get uh, uh, get to the knee or get to the uh, upright and make the throw over first base Rob's Ishikawa here well it, a lot of reason the guys do the slide is to stop and they put the heel down and that'll prevent them from getting very far and allow them to get to their feet if they continue to slide on the rear ends it'll carry them too far and take too, too much time to get up and make the play at first base First pitch strike to Aaron Rowan. It was three to one when Rowan came up last time. And he drove one into the bullpen in right center field with two men aboard. That was a crusher, too, because the Rockies still very much in the ball game at that point. They're not, not that they're completely out of it right now, but. Two and game, yeah, two, two and five are a big difference, especially the way Sanchez is throwing the baseball. He swung. One and two. 
once he started this commitment, as close as he is to the plate, and as strong as he is, that ball started to sail back in on the knuckle part. He tried to get out of the way, and there's no way, and the swing committed. You know, you learn from your mistakes sometimes, Drew, and, and looking there, you know, that old saying, high and tight, low and away? Well, he threw that ball up and in, and he committed, but he had no shot at catching the baseball. And that ball got out over the plate for a base it up the middle. Hey, make sure you're, of course, feeling Saturday, August 22nd. That's tomorrow for the Ultimate Electronics Ultimate Giveaway Day. Select lucky fans will win prizes courtesy of Ultimate Electronics throughout the entire ball game. So get your tickets for the game against the Giants at any of the Rockies ticket outlets. Uh, that's the big giveaway tomorrow with Ultimate Electronics. Rowan at first, Juan Arebe at the plate. Something interesting about a rebate. A rebate hit a walk off home run last Wednesday against Guillermo Moda to beat the Dodgers. And the last giant shortstop, it was a base hit for a rebate. The last giant shortstop and overrun by Fowler. The throw is cut off and everybody moves up. So that'll be an error on Dexter. Second error of the night for the Rockies. I thought maybe Bochy might do this too. He's going to go to his bench and let Lewis swing the bat off of Fogg. Here's a base hit right back up the middle. Dexter going after the baseball. Just slipped it right by the glove. Roll very heads up watching the play. And then the ball cut off. Everybody up to second and third. And just one out. Uh, the pitch count on Sanchez to get out of the game was right at it. was just right at 90. 91. So it doesn't surprise me. He's not going to turn this over to his bullpen. Metters, Brandon Metters, warming up for the San Francisco Giants. Finish the story on Juan Arebe. The last shortstop for the Giants did a walk off home run. His uncle, Jose Arebe. Really? Yeah, back in 1987. Fred Lewis will pinch hit with two in scoring position and one out. Lewis done a nice job off the bench, hitting 381 in the pinch. There's the guy we were talking about earlier, Adam Eaton. Gone. Totally fooled by the pitch. Good pitch by Josh Fogg, second out of the inning. He's talked about how Lewis had done such a great job pinch hitting off the bench, nearly 380. Fogg really got on top of this slider, created a big bend to it on an 0 2 count. Lewis couldn't lay off of this pitch at all. Good job, Josh Fogg. Right, he's got to get a Eugenio Velez. Slow roller out to shortstop on a couple of his at bats. And that's basically his game plan. Sl game plan. Slop the top of the baseball and see if he can just outrun the throw. Been back and forth three times between San Francisco and Fresno. Much prefers playing for the San Francisco Giants group. Probably a lot more fun. Huh? Yeah. And a bouncing ball to help. And Todd's going to flip to five. So Josh does a good job working out of the jam with Rowan to third and a rebate at second. No further damage. Six to one. Middle of six.
Welcome back to the sixth inning. Time for the Coors Light Freeze Can. Look at this play by Ian Stewart. He showed off uh, a couple of his great plays last night at third base. And he made a sparkling play there to rob Travis Ishikawa. That was the Frost Brood Coors Light Freeze Can. Tonight he's playing second base again. Troy Tulowitzki not available tonight. Battling what uh, the Rockies hope is a 24-hour bug. He was sick to his stomach earlier today. And you know he really had to be sick not to be at the ballpark. This call to the bullpen brought to you by Comcast Digital Home Phone Service. Warm up to unlimited local and long distance. Call 800 Comcast. Brandon Metters takes over. A veteran right-hander typically pounds the strike zone. This is his comfort level, working in a ball game with a five-run lead, working into the sixth, seventh inning type situation for him. Two and one overall for the year. 359 earned run average over 47 and two-thirds innings. One and one on help. Todd's hit the ball hard twice. Line single left and a line drive to deep left center field that was caught by Aaron Rowan. And another base hit for help. Third hit of the night for the Rockies. Three singles. Todd has two. Dexter Fowler has the other one. Time for a what do you know brought to you by Radio Shack. Bruce Bochy has 112 career wins against the Rockies. No manager has more. Dusty Baker, the former Giants skipper next with 95. And Jim Tracy, who currently is the skipper of the Rockies, as you know, is fifth on that list with 60 wins with the Rockies. Most of those when he was in charge of the Dodgers. Spent two years with the Pirates also. Garrett Atkins 0 for 2, two strikeouts. Jonathan Sanchez goes five innings, allows one run on two hits, strikes out eight, and walked four. In the air, left center field and deep. Velez hauls it in. I thought that was a little bit toward the end of the bat. Kind of the sound and the reaction you watch a hitter when he goes. You know, I mean, and, and that's something that I watch a lot of times. It's a slider down and away from him. Atkins tried to stay right on it on the Hyundai cam. You can see eye contact with the baseball. The kind of way, the way he tossed the bat away, he kind of gave you an indication he knew he didn't get it all. George eating up a bunch of innings tonight and eat being up earlier the Rockies with the injury to cook probably gonna have to make a move tonight yeah because you start to look down there I mean Eaton could be your long guy tomorrow daily Betancourt would be available street would be available Morales and Bimel I mean it's the urgency side of it of when do you make that move I know the other day, great reports came out of Oklahoma City the other night on Peralta, Rincon, Rincon, and you know who else threw the ball very, very well the other night? It was told us by an American League scout, Matt Ballot. It's up to 97 closing games for Colorado Springs. Right now, the Rockies farm system is uh, smiling, as you would like to say. The uh, Colorado Sky Sox, six game lead in their division to get into the playoffs. Not many games left to play. A matter of fact, today being the 21st, there is 17 days left in the season, minor league season. Tulsa is just one game back in their race. Brad Hopp has gone on strike, second time he's fanned tonight. Modesto's got a 10 game lead in the wild card to get into the playoffs. Asheville has a game and a half lead over. 
Uh, Asheville won tonight Augusta lost so a game and a half lead over uh, Augusta now so they would be in the playoffs Tri Cities won the first half they would be in the playoffs and uh, Casper playing very good baseball so the Rockies minor league system doing very very well I'll tell you about a guy that we haven't talked about much in a while remember Charlie Blackman he came out of Georgia Tech and, and the Rockies really liked his athletic ability he's having a terrific year in the California League he had his 25th double last night and also his 25th steal of the year. 303 batting average. And if you watch him play, he will remind you an awful lot of Steve Finley. Great outfielder. Played a long time at the big league level. He's a 1 0 to Varmus. 2 0. I'll tell you another guy that's come on. Filling in a little bit on Rockies minor leaguers. Michael McHenry, who's a very good catcher, has had a good year at Tulsa. Last time I checked, he was above 270. He's got some power. Back last night, he was two for two. Had an RBI, drew a couple of walks. He's put together a nice season. Very good catch and throw guy. Yeah, we were talking, uh, we, we had a chance to see Marv Foley a couple trips ago. Marv joined the big league club, Rovi catching instructor for the Rockies. He was raving about McHenry. Henry looks like a catcher, powerfully built, not real tall. Is Rosario back catching again yet? And he's got, yeah, he's done a good he job. Was in, he was in, well, he was injured. He hadn't played for the last couple of weeks. Um, but Austin Roush was up catching. There's a base hit for Thomas. The Helton goes to second. That'll get Ionetta to the play. Last time I checked, Will Rosario, who's still a puppy. Was hitting above 280 for Modesto. Not sure what he heard. I know Hector Gomez is back to price shortstop for uh, the Rockies. He's back playing again. He's had a lot of leg injuries. He's had Tommy John, uh, quite a talent. Loses the the barrel of the bat as it was shattered, and he's thrown out at first base. So that's all for the Rockies. Couple of hits. They leave a couple on in the sixth inning. Giants up six to one. against prostate and lung cancers learn more at denverck.com and by bird auto to find great deals on used cars visit coloradowheelsonline.com or pick up a magazine at over 200 locations well this one 
Got away from the Rockies in the first inning when the Giants scored three times against Aaron Cook, and then Aaron Rowan hit a three-run home run in the fourth inning. So they have trailed six to one now for a couple of innings. We go to the seventh. Edgar Renteria to lead it off, and the new pitcher's Adam Eat. His call to the bullpen is brought to you by Comcast Digital Home Phone Service. Warm up to unlimited local and long distance. Call 800 Comcast. The Rockies also have made a double switch. Carlos Gonzalez in the ball game in right field for Brad Hopp. Well, it looks like Adam Eaton. I mean, just first pitch thrown 85 miles an hour. Shortened up the arm motion to, uh, compared to what it used to be. Trying to work more of a downward plane. Credited uh, Chuck Neffin for some great help in trying to resurrect his uh, career and his delivery. Spill Gortz got a good jump and makes the catch on Renteria. So Josh Fogg goes three innings. He allows three runs, two earned on four hits. Didn't walk anybody, struck out one through 44 pitches. So, George, not an inordinate amount of pitches for Josh Fogg. It really wasn't. I mean, Fogg, you think about it, four hits given up. One of those came early in the ballgame on that three-run home run by rolling the right field. 44 pitches in the ballgame over three innings. You like to see that 12-15 average. That's about where you want it. Sandoval has himself a hit. It's his first of the night. Let me correct something. That's uh, for Fogg. Two runs, one earned. For Cook, he gave up four runs, all of them earned mm. in three plus innings. Yeah, the error in, uh, on Stewart. Let's take a look at an offer, a, a promotional offer coming up by Frontier. The first 10,000 fans through the gates on Wednesday, August the 26th, will receive a Frontier Airlines mystery promotional card with a value ranging from $5 to $500. Purchase your tickets to the ball game versus the Diamondbacks at any Rockets. Rockies ticket outlets. It's August the 26th. Molina hits a tweener. Sandoval goes to third. Benji's now going to try to move up if the ball wasn't handled, and he was. He was going to stay at first base. And Rocky's sloppy defensively today. They just haven't played well. They didn't pitch well, and uh, they have not played good defense. Uh, did Sandoval hurt himself at third base? No, he's taking a break. He was break. grimacing a moment ago. Is that light air? <laughs> Kung, Kung Fu Panda's having a tough time grasping for air right now. He thought about trying to score on this ball in left center field as it got out there. I mean, uh, Spielberg's going to make the throw back in, coming around the corner. Tim Flannery's going to hold him up. There's only one out. Runners at second and third. Sure holds at the plate. Left-handed bat. The error is... Going to be given to Ryan Spielborgs, allowing Molina to move up. Three errors tonight by the Rockies. That is unheard of. Yeah, that's completely out of character. up to windshield damage call elite safe light auto glass 303-287-5000 safelight.com is how you reach them online I thought it was interesting today looking at all of the uh, stats on Jonathan Sanchez his ball club when he pitches in 20 starts is 6 and 14 it's going to change tonight it's five innings give up just two hits I'm glad you brought that up because I think one of the underrated reasons the Rockies are 15 games over 500 right now is their number four and number five starter and this ball's pop foul out of play Hamill and De La Rosa De La Rosa and Hamill however you want to order them when De La Rosa starts this year 
the Rockies as a team are 13 and 10. Now, remember, he's 11 and 2 since June 1st, which is more wins than anybody in baseball. I don't care whether your name's Lincecum or Kane or, or, or Jason Marquis, his teammate. And when Hamill starts, the Rockies are 13 and 9. So when, when the back end guy goes, mm -hmm. they're seven games above 500. How many teams in baseball well, can say many. that? Well, not very many of them say their fourth guy's got 10 wins. You know, and the fifth guy's right there with eight wins. But to be that much above and what they're doing, that, that's, that's big, huge. Yeah, to me, that's a big part of the, why the Rockies are where they are because their number four, number five mm -hmm. guy typically match up a lot better. Yeah, they match up a lot better than the back end mm -hmm. of, of the opposition. One and two on Shearholtz. And he flares that one into the seats on the left side. And De La Rosa will go for the Rockies tomorrow. And it becomes a very big start. Unless the Rockies can turn this thing around tonight. Rockies will be staring maybe at a one game advantage of the Giants. And you're going to need a. A good night from De La Rosa and one hopefully with length also. Eaton used to face the Giants all the time when he was pitching for the Padres. When he came up, a phenomenal arm. Worked right alongside Jake Peavy. How about the final tonight in Boston? The Yankees beat the Red Sox 20 to 11. Yankees couldn't touch the Red Sox game? in the first half of the year. Couldn't touch them. Now the was Red Sox the, can't touch the Yankees. Penny Pettit? I think either one of them were very good tonight. Uh, no. The Yankees obviously are on their uh, offense is hitting on all cylinders. Yeah, they had 23 hits tonight. Hideki Matsui, two three run home runs. It's a pop up to shallow center. Stewart makes the catch. Two outs. Now to bring up Ishikawa. Sandoval at third, Molina at second base. Two outs. Travis Ishikawa against Adam Eaton. Garrett Atkins and he leaves two in scoring position in the seventh. Stretch time at Coors Field. Rockies trailing by five.
Rapid Rewind. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. Seventh inning, Brandon Metter still out there. Second inning of relief. After five innings of Jonathan Sanchez, he's on the plus side. Aaron Cook has the hook, and Aaron Cook left early in the fourth inning. And he injured his shoulder. It's the last thing the Rockies wanted to hear. And a quick two-strike count on Ian Stewart. Well, as a hitter, when you start to struggle, you say, all right, don't get aggressive, don't swing out of the strike zone, then all of a sudden you're on two. You know, you get you get too passive at the plate versus attacking the baseball. And hitters, I mean, pitchers recognize that on a hitter very quickly. If they can work ahead of you, that's when you get aggressive. You start to chase balls out of the zone. Make it very difficult. Stewart got a hang at sliders, what it looked like. Curveball, right at this Chicago. Carlos Gonzalez, who came in a double switch, will get his first at bat. The American Cancer Society is the official sponsor of birthdays and helps you stay well, get well, find cures, and fight back against cancer. Look for the purple canisters at the register in your local King Supers to support the American Cancer Society today. Gonzalez fouls it straight back. He was the offensive star of that road trip. So yesterday he had four, he had a home run in four straight games. Yesterday he threw out a double to drive in a run, an RBI in five straight for Gonzalez. Oh, and other guys scuffle. Other players have to pick up their teammates. That's what Gonzalez has done. One and one. Before the break, he was hitting 202. Since the break, 390. We don't have a sluggy percentage on there, but Georgia was leading all the baseball. Well, in the part, half. you know, now all of a sudden they're seeing the Gonzalez, probably right in the hip, the cutter. You're seeing the Gonzalez that uh, Oakland tried to see Arizona, two previous organizations. What he showed in Colorado Springs at the start of the year. It's now starting to show up here in Colorado. Quick inside pitch, just barely caught him. Lancer off of the hip. Fowler will hit against the right-handed throwing medals. Dector at the plates had a good ball game. A walk and a run scored back in the first. A walk in the third and a single in the fifth. This is his first at bat from the left side. Dexter was so far out front, but he was able to freeze well, the bat before it came forward. Well, a guy's got a pretty good eyeball of it. Bruce Boatsy in their dugout, Motus Boats. I want to see if they would jump up out of their dugout and argue a little bit. A 6 1 game, nothing said. Maybe one run ball game, they might have. That's a good job by Dexter to lock that thing up. Forty three thousand six sixty six just announced. That's a super crowd. And there'll be more of the same over the next several days.
Rockies still have played the fewest home games in the major leagues. There's 55. 17 of their next 20. You talk about an important stretch, George. They've been great at home since the opening six weeks of the season. 17 of their next 20 right here. You gotta take advantage of them. Plain and simple. The only place you gotta go on the road to is to San Francisco to play the Giants there next weekend. how you do it in terms of winning games but you hope that the offense which was not real pretty on the road trip it did produce four wins in six attempts you hope the offense gets its legs back well it's gonna have to yeah what matters would that bother you if you're Skipper Metter's preoccupation in a five-run yeah. game with Carlos Gonzalez? Yes, it would. And, and I know what he's trying to do. A couple of throws over to slow the runner down at first base, tighten the lead up, try to get a double play ball, get out of it. But then if you lose focus of what you're trying to do at the plate, he's going. And okay, you end up walking. Now all of a sudden you got a swing of the bat and you got a two-run ball game. Boat's not going to give a chance to look. He's going to make a double switch. As he goes to home, home plate with Joyce to make his switch. Wynn will go to right field. Nate Searles will come out of the ball game, and the hard throwing Valdez will come in. Back in a moment, 6 to 1, San Francisco. Double switch and Sergio Romo is the new pitcher for the Giants. Rockies have two on. Gonzalez was hit by a pitch. He's in second after Fowler walked. Ian Stewart, the only out of the inning. Ryan Spielboard's out of the two hole coming up. Ryan's 0 for 3. Todd Helton on deck. Now Romo, the right hander, pitched 28 ball games for the Giants, a 4-2 record, 484 and run average, 27 strikeouts. The need for strikes is here for Bruce Boatsy and Romo just seven walks on the season. Romo missed the first couple of months. He hurt his elbow during spring training. That's why his appearances are down in his big league debut last year. And he's got a slider in there for a strike on Spielborgs. Ryan, a ground ball to second. Line drive to center field. And he hit a ground ball to short with a man at first. Turned into a 6-4-3 double play. The only left-hander they got down in their bullpen. Jeremy Affel has started to throw. Help in the on-deck circle.
saw that indication of rollover of the glove. That means he's throwing a breaking ball, so the arm's pretty close to being ready. Come in and face the left-handed hitting Todd Help. And Bochy also knows after Atkins, the pitcher spot, and on the Rockies bench, there's only one right-handed bat available, Tori Alba. You're not going to go to him. The backup catcher, Tulowitzki, would be the other one, but we're not even sure if Tulowitzki's at the ballpark. He yeah, I didn't see him at six, all. Yeah. So I, I don't even think he's here. That would leave Smith and Quintanilla on the left side. Two and two. A couple, a couple of value packs from there. They're one of the best deals at the ballpark. Four tickets, four hot dogs, four probes, parking, and the Rockies magazine all for $49. The next available game, August 24th, September the 7th. Don't miss out on your Coca Cola value pack. 380 Rocks or go to ColoradoRockies.com. Great speed aboard, and that one goes all the way to the backstop. It missed Spielberg somehow. Gonzalez and Fowler move up. And now the crowd for the first time really tonight, a buzz. If the Rockies get a hit, it's a three-run game. You're in the middle of the lineup. You never know. Well, that's the key to the middle of the lineup. And the Rockies, I said earlier in the ball game, they typically don't panic a lot. Tried to work around the slider to flip it and just lost total contact to the baseball. Almost hit Spillboard. Three and two on Spillboards. And it is pulled back. For, for opposing managers when they come to Coors Field, and obviously Bruce Bochy has been here numerous times. A six to one game in the sixth, seventh, and eighth innings feels like a two to one ball game. You're just trying to stop the Rockies offense any way you can, and you will pull your best bullet to do that. If that means I felt your only left hander, the game is on the line in the seventh with Todd Helton. I've got to get the out. Ball four. Now they're loaded up for help. And Todd looking in the dugout, expecting Bochi to come out. Watching Bochi, and he hasn't moved yet. And now he turns and has a conversation with Dave Rigetti. And he understands here in one swing of the bat, folks, it's a one run ball game. If that felt he didn't ready to go, regardless, seventh inning, you have him finish this inning, bring he, him in maybe to he, pitch the eighth inning. He's going to get him. Well, Brad hops out of the lineup. But in all likelihood, it's Seth Smith. After that, Bochi knows that. I would have been shocked, George, if he didn't go and get him right well, here. Well, you just can't take the gamble. I can't. You can't uh, let this young kid Romo go out there and face a guy like Todd Helton with the bases loaded. Helton on the season, a uh, pretty pretty substantial average, just 714 with the bases loaded. Seven.
Gonzalez is at third. He was hit by a pitch. Fowler walked. He's at second. Spielborg's just walked. He is at first. Todd Helton coming up to face an ex teammate. He of the 07 run, Jeremy Affel. He has had a great year in his first season in San Francisco after pitching for the Reds last year. One of the most dominant left handers in baseball right now. The pitch in the seventh and eighth inning as a setup man. Helton one for one in his career versus Jeremy Affel. 45 innings is allowed just 30 hits, only one home run if you're wondering about that. And ball one. 55 double plays in 45 innings. That's a huge number. League hitting just 200 against Affel. Place will erupt if Helton could line one in the gap. Two and oh. And there's great speed. I mean, if you could hand pick the guys you want on pace this right now, it. these three would be at the top of your list. Well, the one thing FL can do is get wild. 25 walks. He's only given up one home run in 45 innings, but he has walked 25. He's behind Helton, 2 and 0. Oh. That's a strike. At 96 miles an hour. And he's always had a great arm. I mean, velocity wise, that was not ever a question. The big hook, hard slider. That's tap foul, two and two. Now you get back in that slider count. You in the game better with two strikes. And Todd Helton. In fact, I don't think there's anybody better. Two and two, bases loaded. Now three and two gets away for a moment. Gonzalez understanding the situation. Just took a couple of steps down and then stopped. Down by five runs. Not the place to gamble. Well, this is one place that Daffeld has calmed himself uh, since uh, that 07 season is the ability to throw strikes on the way behind an account. The ball shot away from him. Well, he's not going to gain anything by it. He scores or gambles. You're only just still down four. Three and two. And a comebacker. They're going to go home with it. They're going to go to first. And Affel gets out of it. Wow. 16 double plays and 46 innings of baseball for Affel. That's amazing.
is the day. It starts at 4.30 p.m. right here on FSN Rocky Mountain. The Rocky Mountain showdown between Colorado and Colorado State. Don't miss the battle for Colorado football bragging rights. And we'll have it for you on FSN Rocky Mountain live from Boulder. Adam Eaton misses ball one on Aaron Rowan. Rowan two for three. Rockies have just four hits tonight. Nine hits for the Giants. Out on the West Coast, they're in a sixth inning. The Dodgers leading the Cubs two to one. The Cubs are falling out of it, George, fast oh, yeah. in yeah, the Central. Have. They really have. I mean, some of that starting pitching not quite as good as they thought it was going to be. The bullpen, Marvel, is kind of a 50-50 guy at times after being an all-star. It's been a lot of difficult times for the Chicago Cubs. Up seven games behind the Cardinals in second place. Houston's fallen out of it. They're ten back. Even though they've won a couple in a row. Cardinals just signed John Smoltz. He's scheduled to start on Sunday. Those are the moves for me, George. They get a lot of attention because they're Enormous names. Same with Philadelphia signing Pedro Martinez. Two future Hall of Famers in all likelihood. However, you have to judge them on not their name recognition, but who they are in 2009. And last time I checked, is is a big as big an admirer of John Smoltz as I am. John Smoltz was, in a word, awful with Boston. 880 earned run average with Boston. Uh, yeah, I think I mean, not, not marginal, George. You know, but I think I think what they look at on a report wise, he was still 91, 92 miles an hour. And, I, and I, the other night at home, I watched the Cardinal broadcast because Cardinal territory. And Tony Relusa said, We're going to give him a start Sunday. We're going to give him another start the following Saturday. And then we will assess after that whether he stays in the rotation or goes back to the bullpen as a seventh and eighth inning guy. And you know some people looked at his earned run average in the first couple of innings of a game It wasn't bad, but as the game went through the second time is when he got in a bunch of trouble And I think you know one of the negotiating things he wanted was an opportunity to start for the Cardinals or he wouldn't sign with him He ends up he's going to get an opportunity of two starts But in re reality, I think the Cardinals were looking at him as a 7 8th inning guy and that's the time of year the teams take gambles on uh, guys that have had success before. The Dodgers just picked up Vicente Padilla. I mentioned the Phillies. Pedro Martinez has already made a couple of starts in a Phil's uniform. Phil's getting separation in the NL East. Looks like they're going to win that division again. Defending world champs. That's. A ball on Randy Wynn. This is the first to bat for Wynn. He came in in a double switch. Runner going fouled off. So Rowan will come back. Sure, one of the factors with the Cardinals before the Cardinals is Smoltz 15 and 4 with a 265 ERA, four saves in the postseason. I mean, those numbers are off the charts good, but again, you this can't is go a, on history right. going now. You go on now. This is a different vintage. One play, and that's the first. The Stewart flips to help two outs as Wynn is retired. Rowan moves into scoring position and Velez will come up for the fifth time tonight. He's 0 for 4.
And George, just looking ahead again with the injury to Aaron Cook, we don't know yet the severity of it, but whenever you hear shoulder, guys don't typically take the baseball five days later. No, it's very difficult to do that. Well, really anything with the arm. You know, yeah. it's tough to come back unless, sure. unless it's just a tweak or something that happened. And, you know, some freak thing may have scared you, and you say, hey, I'm done. It hurt. I felt sort of pain. You know, hey, fine. I mean, I'm not going to even yeah, be, try to sit here and figure that out. I mean, that's something they'll have to do with the medical staff. Yeah, but assuming Aaron cannot make his next start, one of the candidates that we talked about is out here right now. And Adam Eat to make that start. Josh Fogg would be a candidate also. He worked tonight which means your bullpen is really compromised over the next few days so you're almost forced again to make a move see and I, when was the no hitter at triple a two days ago i think it was uh saturday was, right i think it no, was three Monday. days ago monday tuesday three whatever. four days ago yeah okay well you know you start to think too i mean she sheen threw the ball around uh, shashin threw the ball very well down there no hitter five and a third inning um when Khan is ready to, he threw the ball very well down there the other night. He was 93 94. Peralt just throwing the ball well. So if you shift one of these guys into rotation, you got to have somebody to shift on the backside of this. I'll tell you, he was back. Then I, I had two two uh, American League scouts call me and tell me that Randy Flores was back to 92 the other day and the slider was up to 85. He said he was the way he was back in April a year ago before he had surgery. Rosters expand September 1st. Well, the hard thing about it, you know, this is something like, you know, Kay and I was sitting, my wife and I were sitting talking at the table. and said, well, how many guys do you think the Rockies would bring up? And I said, people don't understand the expense involved. They say, well, spare no money. Well, if you bring 10 guys up, it's a million one for the month. Oh, but you, you know, but aside from all that, you don't want that. Hey, him off the top of the foot, didn't he? You swing at it. Oh, why did he run down so hard if it hit him? Though? You know, he may have been unsure what the call was by Jim Joyce. Yeah, I mean, but he may have thought. I don't. You know what? He was just he was just covering all bases, George. <laughs> I think he got hit because he was hobbling. Jim Joyce didn't indicate anything, and he did have a, a significant check swing. So he was moving up the line in case it was called a strike, and he was going to get the first. Now watch the glove, the foot. Well, he yeah, swung the at it. Yeah, he swung at it though. Yeah, right and, on top and, of the and if it did, and if he did swing at it, then it doesn't matter if it hit him. That's why he sprinted up the line. Well, absolutely. You give him credit; he understands the rules. And he, you know, to me, he went around. Joyce didn't indicate strike though. No, he didn't, did he? Sure didn't. Well, it's a wild pitch. It's a walk. Or are they giving a, a hit batter? I don't know what they're giving him right now. But I don't know if he saw it hit his foot. A wild pitch has to be given to account for Rowan moving from second to third. Here's Renteria. No official scoring yet. Going back to the expansion of the roster, George, Jim Tracy started to talk about it a little bit yesterday, in fact. We were in Washington before the ball game. You want guys, you're in a pennant race. You want guys that can, that can help you. But it's you know it's not it's not a tryout camp in, in for the month of September. It, it, the Rockies it only, aren't in that well, situation. Don't, don't, right, and you've made a great point. The only way there is if you're in a situation where 12, 15 games out, and you say, you know what, I'm not bringing back these three or four veterans. Let's see what some of these younger guys can do. That's the only time you do it. And, and I'll say this too: There's a lot of times organizations will bring up a kid to say, get the, the the experience of being in the big leagues, and a lot of times they can get in the way of it too because they're not a part of what's going on or playing on the playing field every day. And you got guys trying to win. What'd that end up being? It, it, a walk and a wild pitch. With the ball hitting. I know. You know, it was anything but a walk. That was my third choice, George, because it was either it was strike three and a wild pitch allowing him to get the first. That's probably the, the right call. The next choice would be he got hit by the pitch. The third one would be it was ball four. The only thing they got right down there was that it was a wild pitch, allowing Rowan to move from second to third. 
Two outs. Here's the two one. It's now three and one on rent to real. Eaton wants to get this guy. Sandoval's on deck. Yeah, Jim Tracy also said yesterday, without mentioning names, that he really appreciated some of the guys who've made contributions already and wouldn't mind seeing those guys again. Well, you I think mean, of yeah, one of those guys Cohen, yeah, yeah. Two guys that have done it, and, well, even uh, Phillips the catcher. And, and Paul Phillips the catcher. He's made significant contributions when Ionetta was down, when Tori Alba was away from the club. And you always want a third catcher in September. Here goes the runner, and that's ball four. So now the bases are loaded for Sandoval, and Bob Apodaca will make his way to the mound. I told this story yesterday about Apodaca, George, and I'll, I want to find out if you are as surprised as Jeff Houston and I were yesterday when we, when we heard this. We were talking to Dak before the ball game, and he said, you know what, I saw you, I, I heard you guys had some footage when I pitched for the Mets. He said, I'd like to get a hold of that. I've never seen myself make one well, pitch yeah, ever. I find that hard to believe, even back back in his day. <laughs> yeah. That they didn't have Super 8 or, I mean, we had VHS in the 80s. I mean, well, they, I they could put it on the camera and watch it. I said, Dak, I saw you pitch a ton of times. You were pretty good. He honestly says he's never seen himself pitch. Pitched in the early 70s with the Mets. Bob had good stuff, George. Well, he had to put a zipper in the elbow, and that was kind of the end of it. Yep. Hurt the elbow back when you couldn't come back when you hurt the elbow. It's experimental surgery. Let's experiment to get him back. Sand the ball with the yeah. bases loaded against E. Not a good situation. Twelve times he's appeared there, hitting 333 for the Giants. 70 RBIs on the season for Sandoval. Ball up out of the strike zone. We've seen Sandoval do that more than once in a series with the Rockies, swinging at pitches up out of the strike zone, yet with it trying to get on top of the baseball. Nearly impossible to do and hit the ball with any authority. Very quick hands for a big man, great hand eye coordination. And it's popped up in the shortstop area. Barmas makes the catch. And Eaton, as he did in the seventh, works out of a considerable jam in the eighth. Six to one, Giants.
unlimited local and long distance, call 1-800-COMCAST. By Tough Shed Storage Buildings and Garages, call 1-800-BUY-TOUGH or visit them online at toughshed.com. By the Colorado Lottery, don't forget to play. And by Mike Shaw Chevy Saab, Colorado's crossover and SUV headquarters for 50 years, visit MikeShawAuto.com. And that is high ball one. Jeremy Affelt working to Garrett Atkins. Affelt came on with the bases loaded and one out. And on a 3-2 pitch, he got Todd Helton to hit into a 1-2-3 double play. Atkins, a couple of strikeouts and a fly ball to fairly deep left center field. Seth Smith on deck in the pitcher's spot. The only guy, George, to have any kind of mentionable night offensively for the Rockies, Dexter Fowler. And that's just because his on base percentage been perfect. He's one for one in three walks. And a ground ball to short. Now, Todd helped with a couple of base hits tonight. You're right. Two Todd's for two for four. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that. Thank you for picking that up. One out. And Seth Smith will pinch hit for Adam Eaton. Well, Bible warming up down in the Rockies bullpen. He'll come out and pitch tonight. Eaton, a couple of innings, three hits. Did not give up a run. Smith takes a strike. Looks like Jeremy Affeld Frazier has finally found a home and he's comfortable with it. Remember when he came up with Kansas City? I mean, he was a talk. I don't want to say he's a talk of baseball, but he was a, a real well known commodity because he threw 95 to 97 from the left side and he had a power curveball. Was they wanted him to be a starter. That didn't work out. Then they, then they tried to make him a closer. That didn't really work out. They moved him back into the rotation. Finally, they, they traded him to the Rockies. Yeah, he came over here, and I think he worked his way into the bullpen area where all the uh, responsibility wasn't heaped on his shoulders, and he responded with it, and he has grown back into a very comparable eighth inning guy. Yeah. That's a big arm. That's big, a big arm for a long time. Well, it has been. I mean, you've seen him as high as 98 before, 99 miles an hour. This ball hammered by Smith. Take a good See it for long. Left on left. He hit it to the back wall of the bullpen. God, he's got a great swing. Second home run that Jeremy Affeld has given up in 46 innings, and it comes against the left-hander, which he has dominated as a left-handed pitcher. That is home run number 10. He's hit double figures. Yeah, how nice is that, huh? Watch this pitch from Affeld. Fastball, no intimidation on Smith's part. He's opened up to the fastball in her half, cranked it, knew it, and left the yard. He got out of here in a hurry. Here's Barnes. George, this is his shortest swing as you will see. Yeah, he just sees the baseball and goes right to it. You know, a lot of times pitch hitters will have swing patterns that they have success in. Not for Smith. I mean, this guy is uh, just a very, very good hitter. And leading all the baseball as a pinch hitter now, average one. Remember earlier we were chatting about a conversation I had with Carney Lansford prior to the ball game. He was talking highly about so many of the Rockies hitters that he worked with. And, and one of the guys he spent a good deal of time talking about was Seth Smith. One and two. Got a great swing. He has a great swing. I even asked Carney, I said, has the power surprised you at all? And he said, nope. And he said he, he can drive him a long, long way. Well, they said when you see the bat speed as a hitting coach and you, and you see the ball driven in batting practice and what some guys can put on a show. I mean, there's guys that can go out in batting practice and hit some line drives and put the ball into the seats. And then there's guys that hit the ball into the upper deck. Sometimes the third deck, of course, he does that on occasion. 
Yeah, 10 home runs and 231 at bats. And then when you talk about a guy who you know, playing every day, get 550 bets. I'm not a 25 well, you, run plus you, I mean, guy. you try to multiply it out to that and, and say this is a result you'd hopefully get. And Carney said that. He said, you know, I think he's a 20 plus home run power guy. He said, I'm always reluctant to talk about guys above 30 home runs. It, you know, in, in the post. Scandal era, if you will. Oh, just say the post steroid yeah, era. The post, uh, the post steroid era. That's a strike. Yeah. Is that you, know, you hit 30 plus home runs, Stuart? You got you got to have a ton of power. No, you're not kidding. Two outs, a run in. Chris Ionetta coming up. Time to check in again with Mark Stout with tonight's great Colorado payback sideline report. Hey, Mark. Hey, Drew, while you're talking about Carney Lansford discussing some of the Rockies hitters, I asked him about Clint Barmas because coming into tonight, surprise, surprise, I know Rockies fans may know this, maybe not. Clint Barmas, the most extra base hits of any National League second baseman. More than Chase Utley, one more than Utley, more than Ugla. And I asked Carney Lansford about that. Were you surprised? No. And he said back in 07 when he was with Clint Barmas, the first thing he did was get the tapes of him hitting at 05. Changed his stance, went back to that. Then he proceeded to tell me that last year the Giants really wanted to trade for Clint Barmas. It was discussed within the organization. Barmas told me he knew about it as well. It never happened. And here's the year that Barmas has really broken out, especially with the extra base hits. I know he has a single here tonight, guys. Yeah, 20 home runs. And then and then you throw your shortstop in there with 23. That's 43. As we have said a lot lately. And they are as good defensively as any shortstop second base tandem in baseball. I mean, you put them up against anybody. Two and one on Ionetta. 0 for 3 tonight for Chris. Battling away. Trying to get healthy at the plate. He hits this ball well to center field. And a row in. Can't reach it. It'll be a double for Ionetta. That, I, I know it's coming with a deficit of four runs, George, but that has to feel really good for Chris. He stayed on that baseball. Well, you think about it, he's one for 17 or one for 16 coming into that at bat, and then you come up with a big base hit after a couple of punch outs, too. You got that ball out away from him and allowed him to extend the arms and get a lot of that back leg drive. Picture that swing on the Hyundai camp from Ionetta with a good result out over the head of Aaron Rowan to dead center field. Two out double. It's a six to two ball game. One thing that does work against you tonight, uh, obviously with two whiskey sick, you get forced into situations, and this is the only left-hander you got. Uh, so you, you know, you're going to let him face. Obviously, Stewart, you got Gonzalez right behind him. George, this is a good thing right now because the way this ball game was going. Bochy was hoping not to have to get up Brian Wilson. Yeah, well, absolutely. But again, they're probably thinking, I hope I don't have to extend Affelt so much with the four games in a row with the left handed bats that the Rockies have, I meaning Stewart, Gonzalez, Helton, obviously, and Hobb. Four bats that he would have to face to try to get out late in games. And uh, Affelt has a very resilient arm, but I don't think he can go four games in, in four days and throw 25, 30 pitches every time he's out there. He's at 25 right now with 13 strikes, 12 balls. And you got to figure if Stewart reaches, he's going to stick around for one more with, with Gonzalez Has behind to. him. And then you're talking about a 30 plus pitch outing. Still two to one Dodgers in the seventh inning at Chavez Ravine. 26 pitches, 13 in the zone, 13 out of the zone. Swing by Stewart, two and one. After tonight's 
still nine more matchups between the Rockies and the Giants. On the ground. To second and the throw to Affelt is in time and he stayed on the bag for a moment. I thought he may have caught that after he'd already gone over the bag. In the inning, the Rockies get one run on a home run by Seth Smith off the bench. Six to two. Top of the ninth inning upstairs with George Frazier. I'm Drew Goodman coming up after the ball game. Tom Helmer and the Rockies post game report. It's called uh, Opre Baseball. What's it called? Like Opre Ski, Opre Baseball. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get it. I was having trouble here, and I don't know. The music's loud out here, though the crowd is pretty quiet. After the game, we'll get you into the clubhouse. We're also going to talk about with full ball. The Colorado Rockies having the struggles with missing at the plate. They had 66 strikeouts on that road trip. They've got 10 tonight. We'll talk more about those numbers. And adding injury to insult. Aaron Cook goes down tonight with a sore shoulder. We'll talk about what the implications on that might be. It's all coming up after the ball game. Drew? All right, Tom, thanks very much. It'll be an interesting post-game report. We'll learn more, we hope, on Aaron Cook's injury to his shoulder. Joe Bimel is going to throw the ninth inning. Benji Molina making his way to the plate will be his first subject. Well, the left-hander, 53 games he's appeared in. Overall record, 1-5. and five. Earned run average, 3.72. Good slider, good fastball mix. Thought this was a great addition to the Rockies bullpen to add that left-hander, veteran left-hander, particularly as familiar as he is with the National League West and the success that he's had pitching for the Dodgers. Benji two for four. Guys, I asked before the ball game about how big this series is. He said it's huge. And a lot of times, ball players, George, you know this, you played forever. In the marathon that is the Major League Baseball season, even when you get this deep in the season and, and you're playing another team in contention chasing you or you're chasing them. The, the standard line is, hey, you know, one at a time, and you, and you have to play them one at a time, naturally. But I thought it was very candid by Molina to say, hey, this is huge for us. Well, I think the reason why, more than anything, for both of these ball clubs, May 15th, did either one of these clubs anticipate being where they are right now? I think, honestly, they'd say probably not. But to realize that you are this close on August the 21st to really separating yourself away from the next closest team. I think I think that's one thing you know people uh, in, in these ball clubs. So that's what I think that that's the attitude you see of these clubs saying, you know, at the time this is a huge, huge series. In the pitcher spot, Ryan Garko is going to pinch hit. Garko is being picked up. The Cleveland Indians hitting just 231. 
what everybody quit saying about the Giants. If they get a bat or bats, look out because of their pitching staff. Well, they thought that Garco and then Sanchez, who unfortunately has been hurt, Garco still making the adjustment to the American from American League to the National League. I mean, obviously the biggest bat that has made an impact for their team has been Matt Holliday to St. Louis. Since his arrival, they have been 16 and 7, excuse me, 17 and 7. Prior to that, they were 500. Basic ball club. Uh, their runs have dropped or jumped almost two runs per ball game. Home runs are up. Average has jumped. There wasn't a lot of bats out there to go grab. There's probably more pitchers, and I was caught off guard that Cliff Lee was traded from Cleveland. You know, at the time, I mean, this guy just won a Cy Young Award. He signed through next year. He's been terrific yeah, just so far home. for the Phillies. <laughs> Hockey's got a taste of him they didn't like. Here's the one-two on Garko. Strike three in the inside corner. Two outs. And that'll bring up Ishikawa. Good paint, fastball inside. One thing that Joe Bimo's been able to do with right-handed bats. A lot of left-handers want to sink the ball down and away from them. Don't force the issue with a hard heater in. Did a good job with it there. Cal fouls off the first pitch. Rockies in the bottom of the ninth will have Carlos Gonzalez in the top of the order. We got the right guys coming to make a, a run. Tomlins are down by four. Got in after their day ball game yesterday, arrived around six o'clock just in time for dinner. In fact, they watched the Rockies play in Washington last night. The Rockies didn't get in till after two in the morning. No Aaron Cook and Tomorrow's starter Jorge De La Rosa flew home in the afternoon so they could get a full night's rest and in the case of De La Rosa two good nights of sleep. Here's the one two and it's in the air to left field. Billboard makes the catch. Bible works a one two three nine six two San Francisco bottom of the night upcoming.
telecast is presented by authority of the Colorado Rockies and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Rockies. Brian Wilson's out there, George. He was going to pitch with a four-run lead, so it's not a save situation. Well, but Bochy realizes the implications. We've talked about it the last three night, uh, last three innings about the significance of this series. He's going to run his closer out and put him in the middle of it. So let's get after it, win this single one, two, three inning. He doesn't want to bring him in with traffic and trouble and try to work out of it. Here's the 0 1 to Gonzalez. And this is lined to left center field. Rowan coming on. He makes the catch. A swing of the bat, though, by Carlos Gonzalez against uh, top shelf pitcher and Wilson. A uh, reminder when the Rockies do score seven or more runs in a ball game, the place to go the following day, participating Colorado Taco Bell locations. Do it between four and six, and you get four tacos for a buck. One out, Fowler at the plate. Three walks and a base hit for Dexter. Watch your leadoff hitter on base, right? First thing you look at, on base percentage for the leadoff guy. Thousands pretty good. That is outstanding. Can't get any better. Man, wow. Backdoor sliders, couple of them. He threw one to Gonzalez, and on the one oh one count, he threw one here to Fowler. Wilson, in that ten inning affair yesterday, did not work. He worked on Wednesday. He also worked on Tuesday, picking off a couple of saves. So tonight will make it three out of four ball games. And another base hit for Fowler. Nice ball game for Dexter. I'll bring up Spillboards. You just hope, George, anytime you're down by a fairly big number in the ninth inning, somehow, some way, get some going. You get, you get, yeah, get the tying run to the plate. Yep, just to try to apply pressure any way you can. Congratulations to Dex, uh, a milestone hit. Number 100 on the season. Eighth Rockies rookie ever with 100 hits. That's a strike. Spilly 0 for 3 and a walk. Good swing. Right on that fastball. Strike three on the inside corner. Two outs. Well, it had the ability to throw a pretty good heater and run it up into the low to mid 90s. A little tail of movement on it. A lot of times it will freeze a hitter when you get in a slider situation or a ball away that you're anticipating and the velocity of Wilson. Well, here's help. Two for four tonight. First pitch in there for a strike.
Giants coming in 27 and 35 out on the road. 19 over 500 at home. Two and two. The Rockies have had great balance. 32 and 23 at home. 36 and 30 out on the road. Three games shy of matching their best road record ever. With 39 wins. So it goes full on help. Dexter at first will be off with the pitch. Atkins hoping to get a chance on deck. And Todd lines it to left field. His third hit. And Dexter will cruise into third safely. And now Atkins coming up. Three hit night for 17. Yeah, two to left field. That's where the pitches were with some velocity down away from Helton. And again, his picturesque swing that Todd Helton has, he took it to the opposite field. He'll take away from the opposition what they give him, and they make a mistake to the middle half in. Still has the ability to get it out of the yard. More and more teams just will not throw Todd Helton on that part of the plate. So Atkins with two on and two outs. Six to two, San Francisco. You now, if nothing else comes of this, George, you're extending Brian Wilson close to 20 pitches. The happy number for a guy to come back, uh, as far as the closer is concerned, is that 12 17 ring. That's where you would like to be with him for an inning of work. And then, then when it gets up above that, he's sitting at 17 right now. That if it, let's say gets to 22, 23, you're in jeopardy of losing them tomorrow. I mean, how many times you watch the ball game where eight, nine run game starter, you know, your closer needs a little work, you run him out there, all of a sudden it's 25, 30 pitches. I mean, hey, I'm not available. That is a base hit for Atkins, and now the tie run will come up for the Rockies. Fowler scores. There's only two left on the bench. Tulowitzki's not available. You have Quintanilla and Tori Alba. So it'll be Quintanilla hitting for Joe Bible. Slider just slowed the ball down. Atkins took advantage of it. Just shot it right by a diving cross. Sandoval guarding on the line with a getting in a in back end of a ball game. Quintanilla an opportunity to play a, a big role to extend this ball game and get to Clint Parmas. Tough decisions that a manager has to make. We have one catcher left, so if you if you use Tori Alba here and somehow something good happens, you tie it up and you get Ionetta down, you run that risk. You have the left-handed bat in Quintanilla against a hard, hard thrower in Wilson. And Tori Alba has more game time pop. Now, Quintanilla will surprise you once in a while. 6-3, Omar Kintani at the plate. And ball one. Barmas is on deck. And quality swing there by Kintani. Helton's at second, Atkins at first. In right field, Randy Wynn is exceptionally deep. Rowan is shaded toward left, and over near the line is Velez. That's a strike, it's one and two. Tough situation for that man. He doesn't get many at bats. And then you're up there in the ninth inning against one of the toughest closers in the game. One extra base hit on the season. That was a double. Eight hits total for Kentonia. And he 
swings through that fastball. The Giants survive. A 99 mile an hour fastball ends it. The Rockies do get a run in the ninth. So in this much anticipated series, game one of four goes to San Francisco. The final tally, six to three.